What's going on, guys? This episode is brought to you by AmericHealth.com, and I want you to go there, use code RBP, and get a blood panel done. Get your blood work done three times a year if possible, but more importantly, get it done by professionals who know what they're looking at. Now, I recently went to Merrick Health. They did a full panel review. After I was done, I had a half an hour panel with a uh, one of their professionals. He fully explained my blood work all the way through and what was right and what was wrong and how to fix it. Furthermore, they were actually able to get me set up with an appointment with one of their doctors and get me prescribed the medication I need prescribed. You know, the benefit to this is big. I've been judged by a lot of doctors. I've had family doctors who've judged me for what I want to do in my life. And being a bodybuilder, it's always hard to talk to a regular doctor about what we do and what our goals are. But at Merrick Health, there's no judgment. It's completely objective. And they will help you achieve your goals while staying healthy. Get to Merrick Health. Use code RBP. Save some money, but more importantly, get healthy and get a professional to help you out with what you're doing. So what's the fucking weather like today? In, in fucking where... sad and gloomy and gray and wet and poopy. Is that a new apartment you got there? Because it looks different. Your background. Yeah, this, is, this is my new spot. Jasmine kicked me out, so... <laughs> You're divorced now. You're, you're always complaining. You're always complaining about how bad his internet is. So he's going to stay in hotels to do the podcast. Just now. for the podcast, exactly. you're right. <laughs> Just for the good Wi-Fi. <laughs> so, uh, where were we? My training is better than your training. That's where, that's exactly where we're at. Keep, keep rolling from there. <laughs> we went for we went for sixty minutes. Let's see how long we can. Man, yeah. I don't oh, want to. I don't want to get back into it. But it's crazy. At there's how. I think I definitely got the shitty end of the stick as far as the uh, yeah yeah fan, you got fan response. You got beat. You got beat on a bit. I read some of the comments. <laughs> I was happy with the ones that that stuck up for me, but I definitely got the shitty end the, of the stick. The two or three. That there was two up. or three that were on my side. Maybe we're gonna <laughs> yeah. we're holding this holding it down. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I was just this whole day going through the comments like delete, delete, delete. No, I didn't. I didn't delete. I didn't. There was only like Fuck all these people. No, there's like three comments oh. on that podcast. No, I um. <laughs> No, I think I deleted like two only because they were like total asshole people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like really fucking ignorant. <clears throat> there were a lot of, I mean, there's like a thousand comments on that almost immediately. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I, I can't believe how much people like the argument. Oh, they love it. I can't. Yeah, people are, into, people so are we've, fired up. <laughs> but we've deleted, I've deleted like just me and you Ian. You do this and you'll, you'll do that thinking people will hate it. And we, I always tell you that people like to see that shit. I don't think it's, it. I don't think it's good for us. I understand what you're, I understand how you could see that. But, because people are going to, because people, uh, people are going to take a side, right? Whether it's like other arguments we've had or this argument, whether it's your side or my side. No, and I understand that the side of like, it could make someone lose credibility in something that's not yeah. necessarily a credible thing. Yeah. So I get yeah. it, but, <clears throat> but no, people love to, people love to see debate for sure. I think people like the most that we argued for an hour and then we just finished up, finished by laughing it off. Yeah. What, what was the end of that podcast again? I saw so many comments in it about like that end was gold or what, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm like, what did we, what we, what we shifted into? I was something about eating ass, I think. Oh yeah. Was oh it? yeah. Because then it was like so, something about when Justin started saying that he eats her ass for her, his pleasure. Is that strict? <laughs> oh, is that that one? Yeah. And then it like went into, yeah, then we were talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. That's always a safe, <laughs> safe zone to go to. Cause we can all agree on it. <laughs> People yeah. don't realize that we bicker like this all the time, and then we just get right out of it. Turn a camera on, yeah. Well, yeah. because it, it's not normal. Because most of the time now, like, guys who hang out all agree. So, and if they don't agree, they don't fucking hang out. Yeah. I never agree with you. What's that? I never agree with you. We, me and you never, ever. What do we agree on? Nothing. No, nothing. Diet. We agree on diet. You eat Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we eat Taco Bell. I, I've seen you. We don't even go. agree on the size of boobs we like. <laughs> <laughs> but we agree on diet right sure and kind of no because this, no i mean let's, don't fucking kind of. lie no don't lie because this is the philosophy i've always had okay. eat right. your meat eat your meals get them all in and if you got room for something extra go ahead I, i'm not saying i don't dabble in that world a little bit okay but as far as a general philosophy not really What's your general? Tell me your. Well, let's start a new argument. What's your general okay. philosophy? So for me, if I do that too much, my digestion's fucked, and then I'm just. Of I'm course. not. We're still really on the bad. same page. There's no argument. But, there. So I'm I really, people. I really prefer just to nail everything, even if I have a little room for more. It's just not. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll be straight up with you. So when I was like 
actually in bodybuilding. Yeah. Wednesday, Saturday, those were planned cheats. Okay. Wednesday, Wednesday was usually a cleaner one. Like I would take meal five or six off. Wednesday was usually you cleaner. look forward to these cheats like all week leading up to them. Not in the off season because in the off season you're eating five thousand fat. Oh, 5, but it, obviously in prep everyone would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you clean or cheat, you're like a like a pasta meal or something. A cleaner cheat would be either a homemade like you know pasta meal or like sushi or like uh, you know there's a rotisserie chicken place like Ian knows Swiss chalet. Yeah. Like yeah. I just wanted I just wanted something cooked for me. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday night would usually be something shitty like a pizza or fucking whatever, right? So mm -hmm. that was like planned. And then during the week, when I say like if I was hungry, I'd have something. I was like. I was hungry between meals and I I grab a handful of almonds or something. That's kind of yeah. what I that's kind of what I mean. I can't even imagine ever getting hungry between meals in the off season. Yeah, right now I'm pretty fucking that it sounds like a it would, it would happen to me at, at times, not a lot, but it would happen to me sometimes. I might get yeah. it on an off day, but definitely never on a training day. Yeah, you but know, Fuad has like an insatiable <laughs> appetite and craving you know all the time. You know what it is? It also I would use things like fruit to kill my sugar cravings. So wait, like, do you, does your insatiable appetite also apply to good food or just junk food no there'd be times during Dude. a diet like if if uh yeah but like I mean, in the off season can you eat big meals no problem listen, like yeah. big meals and no i've problem. seen i've seen fuad just eat seen it. fat of oatmeal like this fucking big i mean to the rim i mean a fucking bowl this big around all the way and then in an hour eat it Not, again it wasn't even an hour i, I think i refilled I was like, it like 45 minutes later. i mean <laughs> probably probably what would you say okay hey, i understand maybe you're less consistent of both. with food now that would get easier but when you were in bodybuilding could you still eat like that uh yeah because i remember like especially the things i liked like hani used to have me eating um rice pasta and ground turkey yeah and those were fucking big meals man you like, would I, have you done doing something so fucking specific like that eh well he just said what do you like and i said i like pie, uh, oh, okay. i said i like pasta and he goes can you do rice pasta and i said yeah, yeah. he's like it'll digest better and it and wasn't then, just if i oh i loved it i used to smash it like crazy but i used to put a little pasta sauce on it just because it was off season right yeah. um but oh. that that one i used to eat like large fucking bowls of because i could just kill tons of it and then yeah. even all, oatmeal and cream of rice and stuff i would just have like really fucking big bowls of the shit like, did you measure it or did you just make massive? No, no, no. I no, no. I measured it. Like, like I, what? What is it in weight? Like, what's a big bowl of of? Oh fuck, I don't remember now, man. I would say that bowl of oats I watched you eat was probably 150 grams of raw oats. That and was then, a that was a normal size bowl. And then he ate another one that yeah. big after yeah. like 30, 40 minutes. That's okay. crazy. So when I like, got I, it, I could eat like 180, 200 grams in one meal in the off season, and it would be a very hard to eat, but I would do it in the off season. Big. But like. Yeah, 150 is not bad, but 300 is insane. I could never eat that. For me, it's more things like cravings. Like I would eat my meal, whatever it was, and I might be full, but I might be craving sugar. So instead of grabbing something shitty, I would grab an apple just to kill that sugar craving. Sure. So, yeah, that's, what I, so that's what I mean by having something a little bit extra, right? Or just like I would have something to just... I mean, I think in an off-season, a little bit extra and pertaining to an apple is probably a good thing, not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's why yeah, I, I, can't, I can't make any argument for adding two or three apples in a day or an apple and an orange is any way yeah. bad for you or off season. You know, look, we fuck around a lot on the podcast and I lean into the whole like cheat meal sure. guy thing, especially, yeah. especially more now. Cause I'm retired. But when I was dieting, I wasn't very, I mean, Ian is, is very different than I was. Cause he's like not a food guy at all, but I'm pretty sure me and Justin, like, and me and Luke, used to talk about it. me and Luke yeah. used to talk about it too. We have very similar like strategies or, mm -hmm. or whatever, like systems and, yeah. So I don't know. Well, if really I'm, you know, like, at the, dude, I've been, I've been in this off season for 13 months. Like that makes, that makes it worse. Yeah. I'm like fucking hell chicken rice. again. But I think yeah. that's a, yeah, I haven't been, I haven't been hungry for like a, a meal of chicken and rice like a year, but you know oh, what? That's a, that's a good thing to touch on education wise for people watching. Cause sometimes what I find with a lot of amateurs or, you know, even pros, when you get into a long off season, you start getting sick of your food and people mm -hmm. start trying to, Oh, I got to get the calories in. So they'll start sub subbing in like, five guys for their fifth or yeah. sixth meal. It's like, I got to get the calories yeah. in, but that'll just perpetuate like a worse cycle. For now sure. they're having, now they're having a cheat meal, like three or four nights a week to try and get in the calories. Then you're just freaking out your, your digestion, which is going to make it even harder to get the calories. And then just Listen, as far as I'm concerned, that is how you blow your waist. Yeah. It's like not necessarily food volumes. It's just like that constant state of being bloated and distended and that fucking, I think yeah. we can just, I think we can disagree there though. I, I, right. I think it I think it's food volume period. I think food volume matters absolutely, but I think I, I think it's a I don't know if I agree. Well no no just let me fit let me finish this relevant. before you guys disagree. I think it's a combination of food volume, obviously the worse the food, 
the hey, worst it is. But wait, but wait a minute. But wait a minute. It's also the third thing is, man, there was a period between like when I was in in my prime between 2005 and 2015 where nobody even gave a shit about stomachs. Yeah. So like nobody was doing abs, nobody was doing vacuums. Yeah. And I think that's people just, you know, that shit can stretch when you're not, you're not sure. using it. What I, what I think though, I think gut health plays such a role in it. I agree. And you know, at like the end of a prep when you're just ripping through food and your digestion is perfect. You can eat 500 grams of rice six times in a row. With okay. eight ounces. That's what I was going to say. Like bowling, you digest it and relevant. then you're never bloated and descended. Like, but, but wait I, a think minute. That, I think that has a lot to do with how optimized your digestion is at that point and how good your gut health is. I agree a thousand percent, but I also, and, and I'm only going to say it's not because I'm disagreeing. I'm only going to say that that prep scenario is not really a great example only because your stomach has shrunk so much from eating such a fewer amount of calories. Mm -hmm. That's also why you're digesting things a lot better. Like if you're thinking the last four weeks before a show, you've gone from eating 5,000 calories a day to eating three yeah, I think, of course. Big, I think a lot of it for big guys actually does is when they get in good, consistent daily cardio regimes as well. I was like, just going to say yeah, the activity okay. level is also a lot higher. Too. Activity I mean, level gets way higher, especially like not just training movement, like actual like you know cardiovascular. A lot exercise. of guys, a lot of guys don't want to do cardio in their off season, but it's oh, so, and if they do, they're doing like twenty minutes three days a week, like when they yeah, think yeah. about it post workout or something when they're like waiting for their girlfriend to finish training. You know? Yeah, exactly. No, I, I. I, I mean, I don't, I haven't been great about it since Vegas, to be honest, but 25 minutes in the morning on the bike fasted. Yeah. See, this is, see, this I is 20 minutes every day. <laughs> see, to me, to me, nutrition is a different argument than training. Like not to go back to last week's argument, but when you say there's like hard and fast rules or Absolutely. optimal or optimal oh, way, no, whatever, I, I feel like with nutrition, there's oh. less variance. Uh, yeah, when, when that. you're, when you're, when you're talking about like being a massive professional bodybuilder, not, not just yeah. getting in shape because there's a million ways to get in shape, but like when you're talking, experience. yeah, if you're talking about being as muscular and shredded as possible, you think that you have to, could the confines of what you can eat are a lot tighter or smaller. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so. I, yeah, think I think if, I, I think if you're just like a regular guy who wants to get in shape, there's probably like 15 different ways to do it. Yeah. But if yeah. you're like, if you're trying to be Mr. Olympia, oh. the, the thing gets more narrow. It does. I yeah. Agree. I mean, obviously there's different, different, uh, I don't know, because I mean, like, you could say that, but like someone could also get peeled for a show doing a keto diet versus like George Fair, a little higher carbs. That's I agree. I agree. But is that guy, but is that guy going to maintain the same amount of muscle mass as somebody who's not doing a keto diet? That's kind of why I'm saying it's very specific to open class bodybuilding because you want to maintain as much muscle as possible while yeah. getting shredded. So I feel like you have a less, you I, have, I, I, I do agree with you, but I think the same people that are having the difference between us saying like, you know, that one training isn't proven to be optimal like that would say that keto isn't proven to be any less optimal than like a traditional low calorie, like well dispersed macronutrient diet. Oh, it's I actually agree with that. I'm yeah. saying that those people would have that side of that argument. No, too. no, you're you're right. Cause I remember oh. John, John used to talk about studies in his seminars that I mean, said, or Palumbo. Palumbo does yeah. keto diet with everybody. You know? yeah. Well, Palumbo doesn't do true, true oh. keto though. No, no, it's okay. like a high protein. Yeah. Yes, it's higher protein, but it's yeah. still true keto is like 70 percent fucking but it's still fat. little to no carbs high fats high protein instead of low protein high fats no yeah. but what, what i was going to say is john used to talk about in his seminars is he actually used to cite studies of people who were doing keto who did not lose any muscle mass so it was kind of a myth but those studies also weren't done on 280 pound bodybuilders so. yeah but i think i think the the missing thing there is performance in the gym yes like, yeah. that is the biggest thing. trend <laughs> well, then it's funny about that. I talked to, uh, I had Justin Harris on the podcast once. I mean, yeah. those who don't know, Justin Harris is a very popular coach, mm -hmm. but, um, he was saying that, you know, how people used to say meal timing doesn't matter. And if you get all your nutrients into one meal, it'll still be bear out the same amount of muscle mass. I don't know if you've ever heard that. Like it's, yeah. it'll, it'll, you'll still retain the same amount of muscle. You don't have to eat every two hours. That's but bullshit. Eat, eat 400 grams of protein in one sitting. Well, what Justin was saying is he actually agreed with it, but he said, what in our back and forth, I kind of said, yeah, but you wouldn't be able to train because right. if you, if you didn't eat all day long and then you went to work out, your workout would be shit. Or if you ate an entire, if you ate all your calories at like your third meal and to train after. Well, I, I guess their rebuttal to that though, then would be if you're having that one, say one huge meal or whatever, yeah, you're still building, like you're going to have topped off glycogen stores that are going to last into the next day still, you know, that's true too. But yeah. Yeah. 
you ate a huge meal. Like I felt, I was even talking to a guy the other day that ate a last meal. He ate his first four meals a day. Three of them. First meal was just a shake, just protein, nothing yep. else. Yep. The other yep. meals were very small. And then his last meal, he was eating like 1200 grams of rice. In. Well, and I was like, how in the motherfuck do you eat that? But obviously because of the rest of the day, it's not that hard to eat. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, yeah. Still getting that in and then training the next day early, you know? So that's kind of uh, what I'm doing now, but like with a large uh, pizza. Instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly what you're doing now. <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> Hey, I'm keeping it me. I'm keeping it 260. It's working. I'm not getting yeah, any fatter. No. Hey, I'm not consistency, getting, consistency is what I'm, matters I'm, most. And I'm not getting any fatter. Overweight. Hey, what's your weight at? Like 263. Okay. Listen, I'm doing a transformation after I get my stem cells. So this is all going to be different. Uh, I promise. I think. Anyway. Um, you know what? You know what I think got lost that Ian and I were trying to argue is just. Oh, you're going back to that? All right. No, but listen. <laughs> Two against one. This is bullshit. The guy no. wasn't help. Guy wasn't helping me anyway. We can't. If, if so, think about a car. I'm just okay. kidding. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> think about when you're driving. You don't use ten and two. I'm like, actually, front wheel, <laughs> front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, five speed. <laughs> no, I was just saying. I think we our discussion. We were just talking about like the simple like biomechanics, like the lat only functions in a certain way, the pec certain functions in a certain way, and there are optimal movement patterns for the biomechanics of the muscle. Like, okay so this is this that is, you can't that you can't actually argue you're right so this is where i, I think the argument got sidetracked too many to too oh. many different directions yeah originally my argument with you was our argument is not usually ever about form no right we don't usually argue about form ever no what we usually argue about is tempo tempo yeah and 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 volume those yeah. are the two things those two things i'm not gonna relent on i don't think that you I don't think there's a perfect way to have perfect tempo or a perfect way to have perfect. But then, wait, sorry, you, yeah. but then I, I'm not dis dispelling that, but I'm saying then, but did you concede, which last time you kind of did that different rates and tempo might have different safety issues with them? Oh, I definitely agree there. Yes. Yeah. If okay. you're being, even though you it might not be more optimal for hypertrophy or strength or anything bodybuilding related, you do agree that it is technically, it could be more injury prone, I, moving at higher speed. I 1000% agree with this okay. statement. Control is the most important thing. I think when we're talking about injury, yes, but mm -hmm. control can be super slow or like moderate speed. You know what so, I mean? Like I, there's a lot I of different. Yeah. So that that's, I think where, but we agree on the herky jerky, like zero control over the weight. Like definitely like definitely. I, yeah. I can, I, can I think I'd, I think I'd argue that most people doing a higher high volume are doing exactly what we're doing. They just like are doing sets of 10 building up and calling those sets. Well, I think one of the main parts we disagree with is like, so you're right about what you said. Like mm -hmm. sometimes I'll do uh, uh, warm ups, then feeders, yeah, and then and then a couple working sets. Right. But, so, those, but when but you those, and I train together, we never do more than like two hard sets for for an exercise. Yeah, but I count. You might but I'll build, you might do tens on the way up. But what I'm saying is, I used to count the set before the failure set. So like if I was benching. I would do one plate, two plate, three plate, four plate, right? Mm -hmm. I would do four plates twice, but I would, but I counted the three plate as a set. Cause you did it for 10 and it was I did it for 10 or 12, even if it wasn't failure. I'm like, that's, that's kind of what Justin was saying. It's like, yeah. we're not touching those sets. Yeah. Yeah. I, but that, I think that, that I three think is, plates, that three plates, I might touch anywhere from one to four times. Okay. But that's partially where some of our disagreement is. I think right. like Ian would call that a wasted set. Whereas, Whereas, yeah, I just, I, I wouldn't even say it's a waste. It's that if you felt you needed it for warm up purposes, I know yeah, not yeah, everybody sure. warms up like we do. Yeah. Um, and that's what you need to feel like good and, and safe to move up and wait. Um, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't think it's the same. Yeah. But what I'm, but, but I think, the toilet, yeah? no, I'm no, standing, he's leaning just, over a chair. Uh, looks yeah, like you're... I'm eating up food. Yeah. I think uh, what I'm, I think what I'm saying, and this kind of bears out in some of the studies that have come out recently is that that three plates is still a working set. You're still building muscle. You don't have to. Yeah, see, I just to... wouldn't count sets that aren't to fail. You're a set. That's yeah. the difference between us, right? No, and listen, there's there's plenty of days where I might take that three plates for eight to ten just because I feel like I need it. Yeah. I did today. I trained. Yeah. I was doing Smith incline first. I did one plate for ten twelve, two plates for ten twelve, three plates for like eight ten, and then worked at four. You know? worked Look, it. like I said, our, we've trained together. Uh, yeah. Well, me and Ian, me and Ian, Ian haven't had the chance to train. He's too snobby for me but me and justin me and justin <laughs> i don't wear I'm jordan's really, 
I'm too old. <laughs> not after this year. You're I'm back to this. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> time to go there. I'll, hey, I'll, I'll not after you it fucking slide. blew it. I'll let he, it slide. he started it. He started it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, oh. you notice how much more cordial this conversation has been without Guy here. Just, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think it's because of Guy. I think, no, I think we, I think we fleshed out like a lot of our feelings in the last. I, really, I usually like really spicy shit, but this one, the Chipotle one, I've really been liking. I've never had that. Yeah, Chalupa. like you've heard of Cholula, obviously. I th- I've seen it. I'm sure. Yeah. I haven't had the I haven't had the Chipotle one, but the yeah, Chipotle one's good, man. It's like super. Can I? Super can I? Smoky. Ian, can I make the announcement? What? Ian doesn't know what I'm talking about. But you're coming to fucking my show. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Ian's coming to guest pose at my show May 13th. Oh, awesome. Justin, you're gonna be like eight weeks out, I think, or nine. You want me to do it? Yeah, if you're going to be, because I think you're going to be in pretty good shape at nine weeks. At nine weeks, I, yeah, I should probably. I should will you be in, will you be in guest posing shape? You think? You're in presentable shape, yeah. Yeah, I should be in presentable. I'll shape. let you wear like. Uh, Justin flat. has pretty just has pretty enough shape that he can get away with that. Like when you and I guess pose at like fifteen percent body fat, we would look fucking abysmal. Don't or he looks don't, good. Don't put me in that category. I have <laughs> guess. I have I have guest posings online. I look better like really fat. Yeah, with no. your sunglasses on. Or... <laughs> Uh, but no, I don't think that's right about Justin either, though, because his lats are so high yeah. that if he's not in shape, you if can't. My really... waist isn't nice and tight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. No, uh, if you're in shape, you should come down. Then we can do like a guest okay. pose. You can guest pose with Ian. Uh, we'll just see how I feel, because honestly, I might, I might want to, but I also just might not want to show anything until I'm on stage. Oh, don't be that guy. I know. I just like you know. I might. This is pro debut, man. I don't want. I would just want to, you know. Let the people just wait and clamor for it. Yeah, but or you can maybe no one gives a shit. Maybe I'm over. Maybe maybe you you believe the hype too much. Like people people are waiting for me. Like oh, people I just cannot wait. (laughs) That's all all anyone's talking about. You think Sergio's going to jump into that show because he's from Chicago? That would be a tough one. I mean, I haven't even really talked about what I'm doing. Well, you tentatively said Chicago, so yeah, Chicago, Tampa, Texas, somewhere around there. Somewhere, one of them. Yeah, end of yeah. summer, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, th- you could look at it the flip side way, which is it would build hype because people will be like, holy shit, if he looks that good at eight or nine weeks. What's yeah, he, yeah. What's he going to look like sure. on stage? Right? Yeah. And you, you build, it's kind of like the Derek Lunsford guest posing let, before, let's, the, before let's the Olympia. Let's just talk when I'm 12 weeks out. <sighs> yeah, don't worry about me trying to plan. I'll just wait for you. You're like <laughs> the week like the week before. You're yeah. like, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. I want five grand. I'm on my way. <laughs> I'll give you 500 bucks and a taco. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm excited because if you do show up or if you don't, I thought about like if we, if we flew in like Guy, we could probably just do a live podcast and the guest posing. No, well, Guy's not going to guest pose, but we could do a live that podcast. Actually, that actually sounds like a lot of fun then. And maybe I can finally see your doctor about my shitty knees. Well, but yeah, because my show is actually not in Windsor where I'm from. It's actually in Toronto. Oh, okay, and that's where your doctor's at. That's where the doctor is. So if if he's not traveling at that time and he's actually in the GTA, you can get some fucking work done. Yeah, I just don't have anybody in my area that I think I trust. Jasmine had PRP done by a doctor in our area that I liked and I thought was reputable, but he retired. And now, did, like, did it do anything though? Yeah, it helped. Like she had in her shoulder. Okay. Well, but just because I've heard some horror stories, like guys, like yeah, I went for PRP, didn't do anything, and I'm like, people need you to understand. Yeah, I you know. Oh, I've had it like three or four t- four times now. No, the only reason I say that is PRP is only as good as the ultrasound tech that's ultrasounding and the guy that's actually doing it. Yeah. yeah. So it's like yeah. you could go and not get anything, but it's not. I know. Good. That's why I don't really want to take a chance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, you should come. You should come to Dubai then. Just get some stuff. When's Dubai? Are you going? You're going like next week, aren't you? February second. Damn. Yeah, that's open next week. That's uh yeah, it's like two weeks. I'll be podcasting from from Dubai. Oh shit! Yeah, gotta keep gotta work, man. You gotta you got a high rise condo. I haven't actually booked a booked a hotel yet. You haven't? No, I'm still looking. <laughs> you gotta find the right one. I want a fucking place like on the beach, for sure. So I want you just Google hotels on the beach wherever. I did Get one on found... like the seventieth floor that just looks over here. Yeah. I did, and I found one. It was like a thousand dollars night. I'm like, oh, fuck that. I'm How many nights you there? I'm there a week. Oh man, I'm spending seven grand on a fucking hotel. 
No, yeah, that's crazy. It was, I was gonna say it was like five hundred a night, maybe, but even then, yeah. five hundred a night is doable. I it's just, doable yeah. if it's a fucking sick view. You know? yeah, I, yeah, I've yeah. done five hundred a night enough. I did fifteen hundred bucks a night once, and that was for two nights because it was our anniversary. Yeah, yeah I, I got a I got a really sweet place in Hawaii that was like eight, a grand and thousand bucks a night. I did 50, how, fifteen a night in Aspen. For how long? Hawaii. I was there for a week. <laughs> <laughs> fucking weed business is good but i got i got married and like you know fucking whatever yeah i mean it depends on the occasion we're mm -hmm. we had our 10 year anniversary and we didn't do anything so this is kind of mm -hmm. like our well not not because i'm an asshole we just, had dominoes yeah i saw you laughing i'm like no. <laughs> it, we we actually didn't do anything because we're just busy with work and everything and yeah. we're like, you know, mm -hmm. so this is kind of our anniversary trip well good cool yeah, so we're gonna spend a week there, and I think there's plenty to do out there, and lots of good food. There's desert safaris. There's fucking exotic car rentals. There's like there's you can scuba dive in the fucking aquariums and shit with like awesome, dude. sharks. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Scuba dive in the with the sharks. Yeah, you think you'd do that? Yeah, why not? I don't know. You don't think I will? Mm -mm. <laughs> I think you're a pussy. And I got I got Botox on Monday, and you can already see my face is moving so much less. Like this is me squinting now at the side. I thought your face looked weird. Yeah, the forehead there's still like it feels tight. Not in a bad. Way. <laughs> <It is. Wow. laughs> Not in a bad way, you asshole. I just meant like this is getting better. You can see certain spots. It's it's come a little more. It's feeling stiffer, but it's only two days, so it'll take like another week and a bit to. I love that picture of me. You know what? You can pull it up. My forehead all welted. <laughs> What the, oh, that's the best bucket. I got to find that photo. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, here too. See, look at that. Yeah, I need to get it done, dude. Look at this. Why do you guys, why do you guys care so much? Aren't you like, why aren't, like, I don't know, man. Because we want to stay sexy. But you're, you're, yo, you're Arab. You can get away with it, man. You don't get it. Yeah, you're What's all that, rustic. You, what does that you mean? Can be, you can be dry and crispy and it's just part look of your combo. Look how clean. I know. Well, for one, you look, you look great. You're not very wrinkly. And two, even if you were as wrinkly as a six year old at 25, Arabs can just get away with it. You know? Yeah, for sure. What it makes fuck? you look like more distinguished and like you have like oil money or something. You know? Yeah. It's a culture. It's a cultural thing. You guys get that was the all of the most all of the most racist stuff in one sentence as possible. All true though. <laughs> it was all complimentary, so I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah, we're white uh, guys. We just look like we're from like the fucking, you know, from the slums and like fucking crack people. If we get all wrinkly at twenty, yeah, we look like white trash. We start wrinkling. Like white trash. Yeah. Do you think regular dudes care about the shit, or is it just because you guys are bodybuilders and you're like hyper focused on the way you look? We're vain bodybuilders. Well, it's yeah. true. It's it's true. Well, no, it's, it's just, like we we're, we're all like that. We know that. So yeah, but yeah. I I think I think there's lots of people in the normal world that are like that. But I think it's just concentrated in bodybuilding because it attracts those kind of people more, you know? I don't, if I'm, if I'm taking a, out of 10 guys in a lineup, 10, if I took 10, 10 regular dudes yeah. from life and put them in a lineup, I Maybe bet you, one, that, two had got I, Botox. I bet you one out of 10 is getting Botox. I would agree. Probably. And in bodybuilding, I would say it's probably four to five. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd say probably four. four I think women. most. I think unlike women, most guys are like, "Cool, I'm getting old. It's part of life." Not that the, only... shit. the first time I ever had it was with you, Fred. Oh, so I fucked you up, and I haven't had it since. I just oh, got I, think it. I think it's different. Like when we look, I think for these kind of things, we look in like reference to like our parents' generation. Yeah, you know, like that. Would would they have got Botox when they were 25? And the answer is obviously no. Even if they were bodybuilders, they wouldn't have though. My dad you know? would have. My dad would have slapped me if he was still around. Yeah, exactly. But I think yeah. things like I think just generationally now, I think that's just like more of a normal thing, like that people do. It definitely is. Yeah. Yeah, but when I look at my dad's generation, I'm like, those guys were fucking men. Men. Yeah, but you're not yeah. you're not perpetuating that. You're like, I'm getting Botox. I don't care. Yes. <laughs> <Right out>. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, I admit it. Yes. <laughs> There's certain masculine things I like to up, keep, keep going, but that looking too old. Look, I, I want to look a little older than I am, but I don't want to look like like I would. I look like I could be comparable in age to you. You know, you, you actually uh, want to look a little older than you are. Yeah, I'd like to like. I don't want to look like a child. Like I don't want to look less young than I am. Like like look, my age or within five years is good with me. How how old do you think you look? 
Well, now that I'm nicely, now that I'm nicely Botoxed up, probably closer to my age. No, I'd say I probably look like 37 to 38. Yeah. How old do you think I look? With no hat? Wait, wait, wait. With a hat or without a hat? Without a hat? (laughs) Without a hat, you're minimum 38. (laughs) Now, I think he looks like he's like, like, like a child. I would give him like 27 to 29. With a hat on, mate. With a hat on, he's got. 20 well, to 30 because of my hairline throughout. yes 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 that's Dude. not insulting your his hairline's not, not even that it's seating it's it's a fucking listen his oh, hair he's, looks... just a, he's just got a big forehead bro yeah, I'm just, dog, hey i'm, a, I'm allowed to have a fucking opinion what, no, you're what... not <laughs> your training sucks and, <laughs> and my hairline's great with the hairline back here Jesus. That, that, <laughs> Jesus you have like a seven head so with the seven head Pretty big that makes you look older. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, I accept that. All right. It's if you had like a, you know, I'm just saying. Ian said I look 27. I'll take it with your hat on. I'll give you that. Yeah, with your hat on. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Not doing it with the filter. It's the same. But... If I if I shave my beard and put a hat on, I look like I'm 30. Yeah. Like if I shave my face, obviously look a lot younger, but I still don't look my age young. You know. Okay. So what are some of the masculine things? Here we go. Is that better? What. I just touched up my parents. <laughs> you mean on the Zoom thing? <laughs> yeah. You better. You look younger. Yeah, now you look 25. Ian, try it. I look what? awesome. What'd you do? I touched change, up my parents. Change the. Oh, change how you do that? Screen. You click on the video. I, and look, set I, have, it. A, I have the ratchet go, filter. Go to video settings. And then it says touch up my appearance. Click on that and nice turn, turn it all the way up. Oh, all can right. you adjust it? Yeah, you can turn it all the way up. I don't like, see touch up my appearance. It's if you click video settings, choose video filter. I don't even have I don't even have that as a thing. Are, Are you, you on your phone? phone? I'm on video filter. Oh yeah, I got I got a fully I got fully cranked. I'm looking at video filters, but they're like Justin's like dreamy. It's all blurry. <laughs> oh, it says I need to download these. I don't have them. All right. <laughs> all right. Now watch me get old. Oh, <laughs> oh you got real like wrinkly all of a sudden. Wow, I oh. turned it old piece of leather okay i'm curious because i'm all, i'm on this like uh feminism sucks kick sorry, <laughs> are you? Or, sorry to the women that are watching but yes modern feminism sucks balls yeah um what are some of the masculine things that you like and what are some that you don't like we'll start with the like what are some masculine things from like the 20s or 30s that you would carry on i liked in the old movies when you just watch a man Slap his wife. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're break, bringing that back. <laughs> we're bringing it back. I knew I knew you were going there once <laughs> I said it. Once I said I hate modern feminism. I knew Actually, you were down this, down this road. What did you say? <laughs> Speaking of that, it reminded me right away. I went on a uh, tangent of on uh, Prime um, uh, HBO Max. Going on like a tangent of watching all the old James Bond movies. Oh hell yeah! Oh yeah, he beats up some bitches. In oh that. my god, Sean Connery, man! When you watch these back with like today's lens, they're fucking yeah. hilarious. Man, if you up when you watch old old, he literally he literally rapes two girls a movie. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> like you know, rape, like he just rapes them. Like it's it wouldn't even by today's standard, it would just be flat out rape. <laughs> Listen, if even if you watch old sitcom sitcoms and shit, yeah. there's no way it would fly. Like into, he'll go up to women that. that have no interest in him. He'll like yeah. force himself into kissing him, them, <laughs> grab them, and they'll be like, "What the fuck?" and smack him, and then they'll like bend him over a table and bang him. You're like, <laughs> "You just raped her." You and then they're like, making him food afterwards. That's yeah. the that's the day. That's what I like to see. This afterwards. is what I'm. Ta- that's, that's the shit I'm talking about. I want to fucking br- let's bring back raping women. No, don't say no. Don't, say, don't go that far. <laughs> Come on, you went too, you went too far. Right. Okay, uh, what you have? You obviously have an issue with me saying I don't like modern feminism. Tell me why. Me? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I don't have an issue with that one. Oh, bit. so you're just, you're just being a dick. What, what, what did I say? I'm just saying you're you're making fun of me for. No, you're just you're being... just captain. You're just captain masculine. So it's just... <laughs> I like being a man. I happen to enjoy yeah, it. Sure, I happen to enjoy everything that comes with being a man. Except for that, his favorite flavor of things is like real chocolate. Like that's real most- men like chocolate. No, oh, that's very feminine. No, you guys are the only guys that say m- women like strawberry and shit. What are you talking about? Real no, men women like are, chocolate. Women are ordering like red velvet and dark chocolate and shit. Yeah. Women like berries and shit, dude. Fruits. Oh. No, they like uh, chocolate. 
I like berries. See, I like a That's strawberry good. sundae with some sprinkles and strawberries on it. And okay, I'm not getting into the chocolate debate again. Chocolate's a manly fucking flavor. Man. <laughs> it's my podcast. Chocolate. Is- <laughs> He's vetoing this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, seriously, what's a what's a masculine thing that we've lost? Or not even that we've lost. What's a masculine thing that you're like, yes, that's masculine. I like that. How about, how about, how about bringing home the money? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, like traditional courting of like, so would you, would you relationship positions? Wait, wait, question. So, so money, right? How would you guys feel if your wives brought home more money than you? Oh, I would hate it. Maybe slightly emasculated, but also, ah, fuck it. That's more money in the household. What about if it was like not a little bit? What if it was like you made fifty grand and she made like three hundred? Yeah, no, I would like. That would feel shitty. <laughs> okay. I would. I'd be. I'd be really insecure, and I'd start fights all the time. Yes. Okay, I'm being serious, Justin. <laughs> so I. Let's say tomorrow. Let's say tomorrow. I bring, you bring back the slap. Let's this, say to- wait, wait, let me have the, and it's funny because Melissa and I actually just had this discussion, but I think the the issue from the man's point isn't as much an insecurity thing, is it? Like you're losing your place. Well, it's well, one generally when a woman's make that kind of money, they're more career driven and that's time away from the house. And also that might, you know, when time comes to be having children, that might be a priority for man might go the wayside in, in terms of a career being the drive, you know? Yeah. I think instinctually we also just want to be providers and it feels good to be the provider in the household. But I, I, wanna... I, think men, I think men thrive under the purpose of being needed like that, you know? Okay, but time out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Provider. So yeah. you guys are you guys are looking at this from a perspective of just starting to meet somebody. Let's take just a real perspective. Let's say tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Ian, I got, I got one for you. Let's say hypothetical, all hypothetical, obviously. Ian retires from bodybuilding. And now yeah, he's This coaching. is why we're talking about this, because this is literally the situation that'll be happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so let's just play it out for fun. Ian retires from bodybuilding. He's coaching. He's making like hundred grand a year coaching. Melissa started a fine luxury athletic clothing line, and she's making a million dollars a year. <coughs> How does Ian feel? Yeah, that, I'm, I'm asking the question for you, Ian. Oh, you're asking me? Sorry, I thought you were asking me. <laughs> yeah. No, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, no, hundred percent. It's tough. It's tough to answer. You know, you obviously feel like a bit of it's like a bit of identity loss as like a man for sure. You know, does yeah. it does it hurt your relationship or do you get through it? Well, we would get through it, but it would be an adjustment period for sure. You know, it yeah, would be like she she would be sliding your credit card back across the yeah. table. Like I, you know, it's like I got dinner, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. But wait, the fact you made is at least I'm still making a hundred K a year. Yeah. So like I can still pay for everything I want to do. I'm never asking for money. Yeah, but if she wants, but now she's doing it making a million profit. Yeah. So if she's like, I want to go to Hawaii, and then two months later she's like, I want to go to the Maldives. Yeah. You can't do that on hundred grand. Her and her brother are just filthy yeah. rich and you're a- <laughs> they're, they're, fly- they're flying around together on a private jet. He's at home. <laughs> I no, I'm just flying coach like the next day behind. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you guys the, the real scenario then. So I was always doing a little better than Summer. And then Summer started a job where she was doing probably twice as well as I was. Mm. And I'll tell you guys, there was like a two month adjustment period where i was like this is fucking different mm-hmm. yeah. i'm not i'm not the fucking man of the house but then she started buying me shit and i got over it oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah see it's, def- it's definitely adjustment because like you're so used to being that like that role as the provider no i'll be i'll be honest with you guys so she did start buying me shit which was nice because i was usually the one buying everything mm-hmm. but it actually made me work harder yeah because i, I because that. i because i was like I, I'm okay with her doing well, but I want to do better just so I can stay in the same place. Did it bring up bring up any insecurities in you, you think? It did, definitely. Mm-hmm. Were you it ever did. like, fuck you, go back to your job? No, no. It, listen, there's a couple. Look, everybody's got a dynamic in their relationship. And when a dynamic changes, you have to change with it. And if you don't, it can cause problems. For so sure. I'll give you another scenario that's not related to money. Me and Summer worked in different companies and we always kind of spent a lot of our time at home together. And then when we moved from Windsor to Toronto, she wanted to go back to school. That's why we moved. So all of a sudden she's at school all day long in study groups and shit. And I'm like, well, this is fucking weird. What if she ends up with like a fucking university guy or something like it? It it, it was actually like hard for me because I'm like, she's gone all the time now. Now she's at school all day long. You, she would usually just go to work and come home. We would hang out. 
for sure. But now, she, now she's at school all day long, or when she was home, she was studying, or like she had mm-hmm. all these new new guy friends she was talking to, like mm-hmm. from from school. I'm like, the fuck is oh, this? Yeah. All of a sudden, you have like ten guy friends. I'm like, it's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> not cool, dude. So I was like, honestly, it was pretty rough for me for like six weeks, and then I kind of like, okay, this is my own insecurities, and I'm fine with it, and it was fine after that for yeah. like, but but it, there was an adjustment period. For sure. And the same thing happened when she started making a lot of money. I was like, oh, fuck, this is different. But it yeah. actually, but I think it actually, like, there's two ways you can look at it. Either either you get really shitty about it or it may, might make you work hard or be a better person because you're trying to yeah. keep up keep up with the person you're with. Well, we all get comfortable in our roles and familiarity. And then, you know, when that shit gets flipped on its head, it's tough. Yeah, and yeah. I don't think, but I don't think anybody really understands till it happens to you, mm-hmm. right? Because if somebody asked me before, summer made more money than me she would say you didn't care yeah i would be like ah so what who cares awesome more money for everybody yeah but but then when it actually happens you're like wait a minute i was used to paying for all the dinners i was used to yeah Yeah, buying all this funny that we brought we were literally having this conversation yesterday yeah yeah yeah. okay so money money's a big one we want to always be the providers yeah what else what are we talking about again (laughs) what 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 part of what part of what part of being masculine <laughs> do you do you do you not want to let go of? Hmm. Like, do you like do you want to cook all the time? Do you want to be like, hey, we should go back to the time when I didn't have to cook, but I made sure that the car was taken care of and I threw out all the garbage. I mean, if I never had to cook, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> if like there's always a hot meal when I wanted it. Yeah. How about this? Jeff, yeah, I don't, I'm sure Melissa. I mean, me and Melissa live a very like traditional life like that. Like I make the majority of the money or all the money you know yeah and she d- does most of my cooking she does 95 percent of the cleaning does the laundry those kind of things like well, uh, yeah i mean honestly i as the same for me I, I bring home most of the money i haven't done like a load of my own laundry in years no and that's and this is something that like we've established and it's it's like cool. yeah happy. we have this she's thing happy with, she's happy with her role and, and does the yeah. things she enjoys and i do the things i enjoy and that's yeah. kind of you know, you know like i I'm outside cleaning up the dog shit and taking the trash out and shit like that. Well, yeah. she's, so know. we all kind of have similar lifestyles with our wives, but I feel like the funny thing is, is when, it, when you think about that, no one would look at Melissa or Jasmine and not see them as independent women. Mm-hmm. Well, I if, pay, Ian, if either myself or Ian like fucked off, both of them would be just fine. I yeah. know that. My point is, I feel like women nowadays are like, I don't want to do X, Y, Z for a man. Yes, yeah, because yeah, yeah. because I want to be. They take pride in being not like agreeable to men in that in that way, you know. Yeah, well, they, right. I just I just think they they see traditional roles as being negative, as being yeah. like yeah, as there's being like roles, there's roles in in partnerships in in any relationship. Yeah. <clears throat> what if the roles were reversed? What if Jasmine picked up the dog shit and took out the garbage, and you have to do all the laundry? Would you be okay with I that? Know. Probably not. Oh, but see, but the, this, this is the thing. <laughs> I wouldn't this, like is it. The, this is the thing. Yeah. It's like with, you know, I, I think this is one thing people don't really get is like, there is just inherent differences with men and women. And like, yeah. you know, something that a man might be more attuned to or more capable For of sure. and a woman might be more capable of like, you know, I mean, how many people like, would you ever want to bring your kid to a place at like a babysitter or a daycare where it was a male daycare yeah. provider? No, never, never. You bring your kids to fucking women. We all do. You know, yeah. I would be like, what the fuck's this creepo doing with my kid? You know, like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, I mean, there's, there's gender roles like that. And I don't think that's a problem. You know, I think okay, people just, so, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not like Jasmine's taking out my trailer and doing a big fucking brush pile burn on the property. Yeah. And yeah. Up and she doesn't really want to run and fucking. Okay. 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 So we're going to, I, I feel like some of this is probably not going to be said because you're just like, well, I don't want to look like too much of a misogynist. No. But so if we could snap our figures, we'd be like, we're not cooking any more meals. Absolutely. Okay. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anything else? Who I you don't ever want to cook again? Summer doesn't cook any, at all, barely. Yeah, but like, I mean, if you really, I'm, I'm if, saying, if it was up to me, if it was up to me, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to cook at all. I'll no, do everything else. Yeah. No, I'll do, Jasmine and I eat, primarily eat the same food. Yeah, and we yeah. just usually have like bulk amounts of protein on rotation. And sometimes I'm cooking the beef. Sometimes she's cooking the beef. It's not really big. We start a fucking rice cooker yeah. in the morning. Yeah, it's not like, but when it comes to like a, a nice dinner being prepared, uh, I like, if we're like cooking steaks and shit like that. I'm usually the one doing that. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Grilling, I, gr- I, grilling I think, is usually a guy thing. Yeah, I think we would all do the barbecuing or grilling yeah. for sure. But like, if this we're is, like, isn't that funny? Isn't that funny though? We're like, don't oh. fucking touch the barbecue. Well, there's fire and it's like fun. If, if the if the in laws yeah. are coming over, or like, you know, like my parents are coming over, her parents are coming over for dinner, and we're going to serve them like a pasta dish and a salad and dessert. Yeah, I'm not a part of that, you know? No, no. Yeah. Fuck you know, came, like preparing like the Thanksgiving dishes. Oh. Jack did that. Hundred yeah. percent. I'm not doing that. Huh. And we didn't, you know, I, I, we don't really discuss these things. It's just kind of how well, they. But Melissa enjoys doing that stuff, so it's yeah, like yeah. you want to do it. I don't want to do it. You probably would not want my fucking ass in the kitchen. So like, just do your thing. You know, mm-hmm. that's actually true. The way we do things is kind of just happened. Yeah. Like Summer does my laundry, and I'm like, yeah. We never like sat down and had a meeting. Like, all right, how are we? You're going to do the laundry. I'm going to take out the garbage. Yeah. yeah. No, it didn't. No, 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 no. I just wonder because I've been watching a lot of this shit on YouTube with the masculine. Me too. Feminism shit. My YouTube's like, giving it to me hard on the shorts right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we yeah, talked sure. about it. We said spoken out loud. Now it's all been popping up on my phone. Well, I just I'm I'm you're kind of mesmerized by the the whole Kevin Samuels thing is like got me like yeah. totally hyper focused on it, and I'm like, there's a yeah. lot of good lot of good points sh- about shit because. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want I don't want to like go through and repeat it. I just thought. Yeah, I mean, I, you, guys, the... you guys are a little bit more. You guys are a little less masculine than I am. <laughs> yeah admittedly so yeah <laughs> so i just like if but i think that's because of your generation and the pressure and yeah. i'm like if you could snap your fingers and have it your way how would you have it that's kind mm-hmm. of what i'm wondering yeah so anyway all right I, if i snap my fingers and was like i want you to cook all the food i'm never cooking again jasmine would just tell me to get fucked <laughs> no but this, I know your, not, this, but this is your dream so yeah. do I, should I tell her like I you need to make my dreams come true here? No, no, I'm saying this is just our conversation. No right. One's, okay. No so one's for listening. The sake of conversation, right. For the sake of the but, conversation, this is your dream yeah. world. What does Justin's dream world look like? Yeah. Like I mean, when you see like when you see vid, like movies or whatever with like scenes from the fifties where like the wife is at home, oh. she's cleaning, and she's making the food. Like, the like, like, where's my fucking <laughs> pasta? <Yeah. laughs> the guy, right. the guy's awesome. off at work, he shows up at mm-hmm. home. She like has a meal and she's dressed in like this. He nice throws place. some shit on the table because this fucking stew isn't ready. Yeah, yeah. Like, is that what you want? You like go all the way back to like. Yeah, except except I don't want to go to the nine to five. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want the job at the middle. Well, I don't think it really matters as long as you can provide, right? Yeah, exactly. So we're speaking ideal world is you would have still body build. and yeah. make money, but you don't have to work a lot. You know, as long as you can make money. But you're making a shit ton of money. Yeah, and then your wife is doing all the. House rolls. Yeah. So we want to go back to a time. Where, so we want to go back. What we're saying <laughs> is, what we're saying is, we want to go back to a time where all we do is provide and protect. Absolutely. And they do the rest. Yeah, except for like we said before, like you know, like I don't want my wife out there changing the oil. You know. Well, that's what I mean by provide and protect. Is like that. Yeah, I guess yeah. Yeah, I should. I should make that specify that. Yeah, all the all the disgusting shit, like taking care of the cars, throwing out the garbage, picking up the dog shit. That's all man shit. Yeah, as far or cleaning the pool, like cleaning all that shit to me, is, or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, all we're man. probably all paying people to do that now because we're all fucking sissies. But yes, <laughs> sure. those, those kind of things. <laughs> I'm not cleaning we're taking my our gutter. cars. A fucking speedy lube. We got someone come to clean the gutters and cut the lawn, like you know. But am I am I in in defense of like m- the way I take care of my wife? I pay for a cleaner to come in once a week. Yeah. So she doesn't have to do any deep cleaning. There's somebody doing it. Yeah. I think we should make this a thing. I think we should petition. Yeah, petition I think we should petition to go back to the '60s. Where, do we do we bring this to our local government? <laughs> <laughs> watch how fast! Watch how fast we get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. What was wrong with that? Why was that so bad? Well, I think this is the thing here. I think a lot of times people get conflated nowadays with the difference of e- opportunity of outcome and opportunity. Uh, sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? Equality of outcome versus equality of opportunity. You know, yes. we yes. all want the equal opportunities. Yes. But to make it equal outcome doesn't make sense. No. Because one, putting, like I said, yeah. men and women are different. And when you just leave them to their own, they go into their places. Nurses are mostly women. Engineers are mostly men. Truckers are all men. Men are in the army more. Like, you know, we all kind of fall into our gender roles more. And I think when you try and make the equality of or the opportunity of outcome the same, then all you do is like, okay, well, we need to make 50% of engineers, men and 50 women. Well, that doesn't necessarily give you the best hundred engineers or, yeah. you know, with truckers, like 
you, you're now picking them just because <laughs> they're women doesn't mean they're better truckers. They want to be doing it. Just and, to- and, the, and on the flip side, if there was 50 male nurses, they probably wouldn't be as good as the 50 women. Exactly. Nurses. You know, so who, who, who just like I said about watching our kids, you know. So who ruined yeah. all of this? The men didn't ruin it. The women ruined it. Um, I think a very I'm small. So, I'm going to get so canceled after this. Episode. I think a small, I, I think a very small. <laughs> You're group walking of a fine line there, Fred. <laughs> it's all their fucking fault. I'm just joking. I'm just, anybody, any girls that are watching, I swear to God, I'm being an asshole. I, think probably, kind of I would think that most most women would be pleased to be in a relationship where they had a provider and there were distinct roles within the household. Absolutely. And yeah. And I, I just don't really see that as like a, a I agree with you. But I, I think now they just want the option to be able to do whatever they want, which is fair. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, equality of opportunity is different. And I think we do have that, you know? Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. women can go out and get the same jobs we can. They can do the same things we can. You know, there's the opportunity is there for everyone. You know, I think, I, the only, I think the only thing I don't like is that it's become almost taboo to say, you know what? I'd love to be just a stay at home mom and take care of my fucking kids, which it's is like, ridiculous. it's like women are looked down upon for saying that. And I'm yeah. like, what's wrong with that? That's a fucking, that's, admirable, a that's an admirable yeah. fucking thing, man. That's Absolutely. fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Maybe we're saying that because we're all men though. Women are like, fuck you. <laughs> you stay home. <laughs> yeah. My brother, my brother, he has his wife's a stay at home mom and they've got two kids. Yeah. And he comes to work every day and the whole time she's like, come home so I can get the fuck away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll just like hang out at the farm and like pretend he's working. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <Jason. laughs> All right. I'm let's, uh, you just totally outed your fucking brother. I know. This is on the TV at his house right now. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's do some questions. Wait, no. We, have we talked about the changes to the Arnold list yet? Oh, that's right. Uh, we should talk about that. Andrew Jacks, yeah. The Arnold. I've done a few solo videos, but yeah, we should talk about it together. So Andrew Jacked, um, Patrick Moore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, Nick is Nick, Nick. Nick. Nick wasn't on since we talked about it, right? Not mm-hmm. as a you did as an individual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick Walker, and then um, it was the day before they raised the price, and Nick jumped in. That we were talking about. I still think, I still think Rami should fucking jump in. No, I think he'll take more time than that. He needs to like fix whatever, like some injuries has got going on, and you know. Yeah, Listen, know. Rami. Okay, just not that Rami, I don't think he could win, but well, no, no. But look at Rami was fifth. Nick was third. Yeah. If I was Rami, I'd be like, okay. If I do have problems, obviously with my triceps and my back, but I also think my prep, my peak didn't go the way I wanted to. Maybe I want another chance to stand next to him. And even if I lose to him, I'm still second place, which is still fucking a hundred grand or whatever it is. Yeah. So it's like, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah, I think I think it's a little different when you've been an Olympia champion and you're just lost your title, you know? No, like, but if I you want with you for anyone else, but I mean Rami has won the Olympia twice, man. Like he coming second to Arnold is a, a massive loss to a guy like that. But you if know? you think, but if you think, and and who knows if he's right or wrong, if you think that your peak was is off. behind you. Yeah. No, 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 not, not your prime. I mean, his peak for that show. Oh, sure. If you, if you think you should have been better or could have been better at the Olympia, then you're like, Hey, you know what? I can beat Nick. I'm going to do this. Cause I can get my stock back up for the next Olympia. Right. Cause if he, if, if he walks in, saying. if he walks in and beats Nick at the Arnold, he puts then, himself back into third it's place. Moment, in the it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's back in the conversation yeah. at the Olympia. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I look. There's two sides to that coin. I don't think either of them is right or wrong. I mean, they're both possibilities. Well, look I at, see the reason why he wouldn't, and I see the reason why he could. But look at it this way: if he does, but it, I, if I was him, I certainly wouldn't. One minute, if he does it and he loses to Nick and takes second, his stock doesn't change. No, I think then the discussion of Rami really being done is kind of solidified. Then you know, like I think if you come and you lose to Nick, a young guy like that, it's kind of like. He was just winning the Olympia. Now he's fifth at the Olympia, second at the Arnold. Like, man, I came second to the Arnold, you know? Like, I'd obviously it's different, but I still came second just to Nick, you know? Like, yeah. so, I mean, it's it's different then. Like, you know, I think as a, a previous Olympia champion, the only place to go for from here for him is back to win the Olympia, you know? Yeah. I think that's really the only thing that's going to feel anything, anything slightly good to Rami, you know? I could see that. I still think... <laughs> If, yeah, I still think there's only upside because nobody expects him to be drastically different from the Olympia. But if it was just like, like you said, right? Let's say, take you for example, you were 10 pounds under where you should have, where you think you should have been, or eight to 10 pounds, whatever the 
peak was, right? Let's say that same thing happened to Rami. Rami yeah. comes in five pounds heavier. It's a different look. Maybe, sure, yeah. So I don't think he has anything to lose, in my opinion. He has only something to gain. Because if he... Um, if unless he thinks that... Unless he takes third, fourth, or fifth, and he ends up behind yeah, Unless Samson he thinks that there's potential of him slipping farther down or that he thinks his issues need more work than 12 weeks, you know? And I think there, I think there is potential for him sliding down. I think Samson could beat him. Yeah. If Samson's harder than he was at the Olympia, he could definitely beat him. They were only one spot but apart. I'm, but I'm, oper I'm operating under the premise that Rami has real issues that need to be taken care of, which is why he's going to see Dr. Khan for, you yes. know, his discs or whatever, right? But yeah. I also think, let's say... Let's say those issues were compounded by not being peaked properly. And when he shows up at the Arnold, he's five to 10 pounds heavier and, and fuller in some areas. Maybe he pulls ahead of Nick. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, you know, it not, also because it's not, it's not a, I mean, $300,000 is a lot of money. But for, I don't think for Rami, it's a money thing. I think it's a get my stock back up so that when I, the Olympia rolls around, I'm, yeah, see, at, I, I think in his mind, if, if I'm thinking like trying to think like Rami, I think that only at the Olympia matters to him now. I don't think winning an Arnold title really matters for him trying to get his stock back up or anything. I think all to him, he needs the time. He wants to come back better next year and win the Olympia, regain what he lost in terms of, you know, pride and placement at the Olympia, you know? I could see that. Yeah. But I understand completely what you're saying. I don't disagree with it. I mean, no, sorry. I do disagree with it if it was me, but I don't disagree right. with the premise of it. Well, let's look at the business side of it. He just launched a supplement company. Yeah. Competing more, being at the Arnold Expo, being at the Arnold, and then yeah, showing up. The flip side of that is also being more available to allocate more energy into the actual supplement company itself. Yeah. You know? Oh, you mean because he's going to be, well, I don't think, wait a minute. I don't think Rami's doing the day-to-day -day work there. I don't think, I don't think so either, yeah, but I'm just yeah, saying you, yeah. could, you could build an argument for either side of that as well. I don't, I don't think, Rom, not that, I don't want to say Rami's not doing anything. I don't know the situation there. I just, I'm, I mean, under, just the, yeah. I'm under the assumption that he's the figurehead of the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, would, I would agree. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think it's a matter of taking him, taking him away from like the day-to-day -day operations. Sure. I think it's. He's not big boss CEO down in the trenches like Fuad. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no but um i think i think if you own a supplement company you want to be on stage again it is it is more awareness for your company what's the so, name of this company again red rex hmm. it's okay. got the, di the dinosaur logo yeah i don't know it doesn't matter the point is i'm just trying to make a I, I would, I would love to see him compete. We're looking at like almost a repeat oh, of the. Sure. Yeah, we're looking at all of every every single person on the planet would love to see him compete. Well, I'm just saying because now with Nick and Andrew jumping in, we almost have a repeat, like a pretty close repeat of the fucking Olympia. Like it's going to be a, an yeah, awesome you're just show. The top two, really, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's a very competitive show, and I think the few tweaks for either one of those guys, you know, Nick could be drier and solidify his placing. Mm -hmm. Sam Samson could be drier and be. I just actually talked about this on the last last video I did. The posing round counts at the at the Arnold. Uh, so how much I does that help? It, I don't know if it counts towards your score as much as it's scored because for the best poser award. No, I think it's scored towards your score, but I think where people get confused is they think no, because I I did it last year. And the, the posing round is posed as a physique round. Yeah, um, not physique, not posing not round. Posing. no, no, that's what I was about to say. Is it's not how good your posing routine is. Yes, but it's how good your physique looks in your routine. So yeah. if you like fucking peaked and nailed in at night and nailed, yeah, because good. like I didn't lose. But, I we've didn't are, lose. But, you, but you've already said that Samson is a master of like hiding weaknesses and showing strengths. Thing. Yeah, for so sure. So if like, but we, like I also didn't when I came second the Arnold, I didn't lose to anybody in the posing round that I beat in the show. It was like my score was almost the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If I anything, just, it was actually a little better comparatively because I just looked better at night, you know? The reason the reason I brought it up is because in the video I did, I cited Kai Green and, and Cedric McMillan. Yeah. Because Cedric was winning and Kai beat him on the post. Yeah, they changed it back. It's changed since then. Oh, okay. So it's not, not the same as not... then. Because like like uh, when I did it at the – when I did the Arnold, Sergio won the best poser award, but his score for that routine – that round was still worse than mine. Oh, so they judge the artistry of it for the award and the and physique. And they judge it just as it. a, what, how good is your physique? And if you look about the same in the morning as your score is probably going to be the same, you know? Okay. Okay. Like me, I looked a little better. And I think at like in, in the morning I had lost points to Steve, obviously, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and then at night it, in the posing routine, I actually beat him in that posing round, but he obviously posed probably better than it me. Seemed, it honestly seems a bit superfluous. I feel like you should just do a confirmation round. Which we did as well. So yeah, I don't know right. that score. Yeah, like I don't remember I don't, exactly. I don't know if I agree fully. <laughs> Pull up the Arnold scores from last year for 2020. One, sec- one, one second, one second. I just, uh, there's a, a bigger debate I want to have. Not a debate, but just to th- uh, kind of open it up to brainstorming. Sure. If you're, what's wrong with, is posing part of bodybuilding? If it is, why not <laughs> judge? Why not judge the posing routine as a posing routine instead of I a physique like round? If you're judging the posing routine, it should be the routine itself. That's what I'm saying. You've already judged the physique. I just think there's too much subjectivity in terms of judging quality of posing because, like, yeah, is Kai Ian, Green Ian, a good poser or is, like, you know, an old school, very, Ian, you know, Ian, what? The, whole, the whole sport is subjective. That's why you have seven judges. Yeah, but posing is yeah. way more subjective than a physique, man. It doesn't yeah, matter. We, that, if we all still... seen Kai Green fucking spinning on his head, we might roll our eyes at that where maybe but, he gets. But wait a minute. That's why you have seven judges, right? Regardless of how subjective it is, you have seven people that are going to agree on it. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm looking at the scorecards from last year um, or from when I did it. Like I had a 16 in pre-judging where Steve Kukla had a perfect 10 in second place. But then in the routine, I had a 12 and he had a 14. In the finals, he had a 21 and I had a 15. So total score for him was 45 and mine was 43. So like, you know, and even Sergio Oliva, his routine round, he scored a 29 I scored a 12, but he won the best poser award. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So they're just judging it as another a third yeah. physique, you know? Yeah. Well then I think that's, that's a moot point then. If you already have a physique round, you have a confirmation round. There's no point. That's I think if I, you're gonna, that was my argument. No, no. And I agree with you then, but I think if what I'm saying is if you're going to judge the, like, I think it should be another round. Guys should fucking try and win that fucking round. Yeah, and that's if yeah, calling- I, I don't disagree with it. Like, obviously, I wouldn't want that. But I mean, I, <laughs> I I don't disagree with the premise of it. I just I think, in my opinion, it's like, that's way too subjective. Because, you know, and I understand you're saying all bodybuilding is subjective, but like, it isn't it isn't because like, I might not say that I think when Kai Green does fucking headstands in the worm as good posing, but people watch Kai Green think he's the best posing ever, or someone like Terrence's yeah. style, or I someone understand. like Fred Smalls, you know? Yeah, there's no there's no criteria, I guess. No, I, I, where I, yeah, conditioning yeah, yeah. and these things are like, even though there's some of subjective, they're also still tangible, pretty, like, pretty tangible and linear, you know? Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, so what's the posing routine round for, for then? Just to express personality? Is just a, yeah. just purely entertainment. Yeah, for your for your family to come watch you, and for guys that like to pose to show it off, you know. So yeah, so it's just a completely useless. Well, I mean, Milos is batting pretty hard for it to be judged right now, right? I know that. Yeah, him and him and Bob are going at it, and yeah. I, I I see. So wait, does Bob agree or disagree? Bob disagrees. Okay. Well, Bob is the one, and and I know. I hope to God I'm saying this correctly because I don't want Bob to make another video. But oh, no. I think Bob was the one that had the the um symmetry round pulled into combination with the uh like i think he combined it with the other rounds because i think, I think right. isn't that what the argument is is bob kind of took it and made it part of like the the symmetry round think, one yeah like it was so we'll do our quarter turns and then do you know the yeah poses? i think yeah i think he put it that's all together now with the mandatories yeah whereas i think what milos's argument is oh. is the, the posing round was partly a symmetry round, so I don't, I don't know, I don't. They're, they've been going back and forth about it for a while, so I don't know what the fuck the. I don't yeah. think you can. I don't think you can really judge someone's symmetry in a posing routine when they could do every right. single goddamn pose pros- possible to not display symmetry or to hide, yeah. to hide bad things in their symmetry. But I think that's what Milos's argument is: is if somebody can show their physique in a nicer way. Oh then that represents well then i i agree with it yeah i agree with it then being a judged round if you can display your physique in a better light and just make your physique look more impressive but then you're now judging the physique and we're not judging the posing again you know what you could do i have an idea you know how for the fitness rounds they have actual things that they have to do in the round yeah like mandatory like they have to do like a backflip and they have to do a push-up and they have to do like a fucking there's certain things that in your routine you have to hit all the mandatory no, well, not all the mandatory. You could make up hey, five. You could make up poses. You could say you got to do like a twisting back shot. You got to do like a whatever poses you decide. Maybe I think I think these five have, these five have to be done. You do them in whatever order you want. 
that could be something to do to actually make yeah, it. I, I, really, I think honestly that having now poses that are outside the seven mandatories would get guys working on their posing more. Yeah. Um, and I think it would, you know, have like, I don't really do any poses other than my mandatory poses and like any transitions into them. Like I'm not doing, you know, three quarter rear kneeling fucking whatever's, you know? So I think that if you had like some tasteful and realistic poses, like, yeah. You can't yeah. have guys doing like splits out to one side, front no, no, double no. bicep, you know? Just like you have to do one pose on the with yeah. with one knee down or on the ground. You have yeah. to do one twisting shot. You have to do one like you you pick like a few a uh, general terms, and then you're like, let's see who presents <laughs> it, presents it the best. Yeah. Hmm. Then you have art, you have some personality, and you actually and have still a can, and you still can, can still score them in different poses. Yeah. Yeah, because now, like you said, you have criteria. You have criteria. And, no, then, I mean, that's not a terrible and, idea. It, and then it leaves and then it leaves the artistry of it up to the athlete to say okay this is the order i want to hit these poses just like same thing with the fitness routine yeah this is the order i want to do my shit in or the music i want to pick or whatever it is yeah i just figured it out see yeah, yeah i mean and you yeah like you said you could I should give, be fucking i should be you fucking give, you could give an artistry score to that as well which is a more subjective score but it's not the entirety of the score so like one third of that score could be artistry and like you know how you work into those mandatory poses like yeah, you yeah. just stand there and hit this Stand there, three quarter shot from the back because they made it. Yeah, a yeah, yeah. you don't get shit. For versus that, yeah. if you work it into a routine that yeah. makes sense with flow and elements, that could be a score, but be one third of the total because it's more subjective. You know. You know what I think, Ian? <laughs> I think the IFB should let me and you sit in on their meetings, <laughs> <laughs> and then let me tell them all how to train. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can do the index for training. Yeah, yep. Yeah. No, but I think look at the two two great ideas we've come up with in the last three weeks. Yeah. This is not the posing routine round we've figured out. And remember, we talked about having a season. Season. That one kind of caught on a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, people grabbed it, but didn't give us credit. Yeah. <laughs> but I think... It's out there in the ether. I feel like for the posing routine, though, if you do want to judge that, I think making everyone do all the mandatory poses within the posing routine almost makes more sense. That way, the judging criteria is still the same. But you can have those other elements, like like Ian was saying, of like yeah. But then I feel, but then I feel like you're just it's almost a repeat. So I feel like if you add, yeah. So that's why you add like three or four new poses. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like we're putting in, you almost take. I mean, I think that would that would be the extra element that you add, and and you can be creative and do your part of your artistry score more than your artistry. Yeah, Yeah. like like we can still judge the mandatories that are in your posing routine that way. There is like how did you get how did you get into them? How did it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 That way, there's some continuity from like yeah you know, it's like we're judging how you looked in those poses as well as the artistry you did to get into or any other poses you know yeah i don't know it's really tough but no no that's not tough that's a but great no that's idea. a start i mean that's a way that you could definitely make no no work. that's that's not complicated at all that's exactly no, what they no. do for fitness yeah yeah that's how that's how they score fitness right yeah you just I, have I, you would I, just I, have to be deciding what those elements are and exactly how to judge them, right because like but, the fitness girls can't go out and do a shit routine and then win no no, they have actual criteria they have to yes. be judged by. So I think the only thing that you could do if you wanted to add some personality to it, and I'm not sure if this is a good idea or not, but you could say like, instead of saying, this is the pose you have to do, and it's like one knee on the ground with an arm up, you say you have to do one ground pose and then sure. let the athlete decide what the ground pose is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then that could be like 18 different poses. So that's true. the guy just be like crawling onto the ground and then hitting a pose and <laughs> <laughs> crawling back. <laughs> Ah, anyway, I think that's good. That's that's interesting. I don't know. How, I don't know how we got to that. Oh, we we're talking about the Arnold. Um, okay, so Rami, I hope he gets in. But I see Ian's point. Andrew, Samson, Nick, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say if Samson is in shape, he wins the show. Man, only, I don't only, think Nick- only yeah. because only because. I feel like Arnold. I should. I probably shouldn't say that. That's a- oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I probably Listen. shouldn't say. No, no, I probably shouldn't say Sam's going to win the it's show. It's a more Arnold. It's a more Arnold era physique. I, it, I, it absolutely is, and I will say if Samson is as hard as Nick, yes, yes, yes. the likelihood yeah. of that happening, I think is is very it's up. It's up in the air. I agree, but Nick, but Samson is getting better from show to show to show. Nick, oh, is, still, Nick is still pretty superior from the back, in my opinion, too. Yes. I'm not. Uh, I that, that the actual on. wait, wait, wait. The actual back, yes. Hamstrings are pretty close. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe in just overall good. width, but not in detail and separation. And, you know, I don't know if I agree with that. I think in thickness, I'll give you, I'll give you, but 
I don't know, man. Nick's got some pretty wacky adductors and hamstrings. Yeah, he does. From the side, you're one thousand percent right. From the back, I mean, Samson still. Has, I'm not saying I'm saying, still think Samson's insane, but I think Nick's are some yeah. of if not the best. Yes. Yeah, like from the rear competing right now. You know. Yeah. Uh, this is him. Wait, Samson's so me. badass. Like that shot right here that of him on the ground. That yeah. Knee on the top. Which one? Go to the top. This one. That one right there. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, like that kind of shit's fucking. Dude, he's the fucking man. The facial emotion and all the yeah. shots is awesome to see. Too. Oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. Yeah. So the thing yeah, is, definitely the same. Definitely good width, no doubt. Yeah, like the adductors inside, you can see the. Yeah, you know. Yeah, the, it's just the, the the back itself that Nick yeah. just so much. Yeah, what I'm saying it, when I'm saying the back shots, I'm saying the back itself. Yes, the full thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. And Nick, but it's also still so wider and thicker. His arms are bigger. You and know, it is also I, coupled with crazy adductors and and, and, and insane conditioning. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. How this is probably something here. Well, no, go stay a sage shot. No, no, just I don't think you have to because Nick's hamstrings are crazy. I mean, from the side for sure. Dude, he looks fucking like, good though. Jeez. Yeah. He looks super like clean look right now. Yeah. Uh, he did a kneeling pose. He did. Yeah, I know. I was so I was, impressed. With his I, was imp- I was impressed with a lot of these shots. I wish I got to go to the night show. Yeah, it was awesome, dude. Um, where the fuck is the stage shots? There you go. But I mean, that's not standing up. But come on, Nick. I mean, he just there he just is. holy there fuck. <laughs> All right, forget it. <laughs> That's just <laughs> wacky. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Look, like, I mean, you can see the size of the hamstring and adductor on Samson is comparable for sure. But then the quad flare on Nick's a little more. The condition. I don't, the, I don't, I don't. Back, and, back no, arms no. and shoulders. And the shit. back, the back arms and shoulders is just wild, man. So it's kind of what I thought when I was thinking it in my head. Samson's hamstrings are as wide. Yes. But, but in this shot, especially, you can see the thickness and depth of Nick's hamstrings. That's yeah, right. no, I, I, I think of all the things in the back shot, I think their hamstrings and adductors are the closest. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's yeah. Nick's back. It's back his back arms delts combination. And for a guy that like, I mean, has been, you know, not said to have like the, the most pleasing shape from the front, his fucking X frame and V taper on that back double. That, That's is amazing. fucking crazy on the back double, you know? Yeah, this That's is just crazy. this is impressive. Yeah. Having like fucking 25 inch arms just looks awesome, eh? I wonder, I wonder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do any pose when your arms are I know. Out. Like, look at that most muscular and just look at all. You just see yeah, fucking. That's the, that's the thing. If you did make some mandatory poses within posing routine, you could really expose some guys by like making them do like a crucifix pose or something. Yeah, yeah. you totally could. Yeah. yeah. Like, not everybody can just stick their arms out and have them. Yeah, look see, good. it's this, this part of the hamstring here. You know, there's three heads. Yeah. See, how, see how fucking thick that is. <laughs> yeah, no, Samson's was good too, but yeah. I mean, it's you see a little more when the conditions a little harder like that, you know. All mm-hmm. right, so Nick is obviously the favorite, but and that's and that's not at all what I was. I was never saying he's not the favorite. What I was saying is, yeah, the tweaks that have to happen is Samson's got to get sharper and Andrew's got to get sharper, and then things could change. You have and to then, admit, you have to admit, if they're sharper, there's a possibility. Especially all, all Nick it. has to do is just do what he does every time, and he's gonna yeah. be but I mean, especially because the way the way I'm seeing it is at an Arnold show, Arnold likes the symmetry, and that's why he used to love Cedric's physique. So I'm thinking Andrew Samson may get a better look. Not that Arnold's a judge. Well, I don't know if they necessarily have better the symmetry, judging, but they have better flow for sure. I don't yeah. know if I judge Justin, I know he's not a judge, and I know that doesn't matter, right. but but I wonder. I, I just think this just because I think as a judge, it's still human nature. Yes. Do you are you like, hey, Ar- Arnold likes this. Maybe I should take a second look. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe they spend a little more time looking at somebody if they know that's like Arnold's favorite physique, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's tough. But Nick is working like, on that. Like radio like that, like Arnold likes Samson. Well, <laughs> I think it's something you probably already know. Right. Yeah, not, I think everyone, I think everyone knows. Yeah. I don't yeah. think anyone was surprised that Arnold liked Cedric. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Of of exactly. That being said, if if Nick can bring, I can't believe Arnold trolled Pi and told him to do a vacuum. That was so funny. So funny. Uh, oh yeah. Do yeah. so a vacuum. And George Peterson too, right? Yeah, he did to George Peterson, and then he did he, do did, it? Then he asked him yeah. who won the fucking um, men's physique. He's like, why the shorts? Oh yeah, <laughs> but that but that was funny. 
<laughs> he was hilarious, yeah. <laughs> so he was, well, I don't know. <laughs> like, hmm, just doesn't make sense to me. That's funny. That's funny yeah, it's probably not a great look for a promoter. No, probably not. Like, congratulations. Why are you wearing those stupid shorts? Yeah. But, I, you know, Arnold's personality. I think he's just having fun. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. He just doesn't give maybe a, a bit, Maybe a bit senile. <laughs> No, nah, I think he's just fucking having fun. Maybe I don't know. Dude, he's a he's a ball buster. It's it's always yeah. been. He's just a he's just a ball busting kind of guy. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Uh, what about Sean? I know a lot of people are talking about Sean. I think Flex Wheeler put. I think a uh, yeah, that... he could beat uh, Nick easily. Yeah, I think that's a little. Bit I, I don't agree with. I see him. In the, I see him in the top three. Yeah, I think he can be as high as second, as low as fourth, fifth. Uh, fourth. But I see him more like. Uh, Samson's just too like look I obviously know and I mean this with all respect to Samson Sean's just perfect for his stature you know his yeah. conditioning his fullness his muscularity is all better than Samson but pound for pound, for pound Sean will be the best bodybuilder on the stage but he's a hundred pounds less and that does matter you know? I know I know so that's where it's 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 one of those things that like I, I don't disagree that Sean pound for pound is probably the best bodybuilder on the planet but I don't know if that if that matters that much when there's that big of a size discrepancy, you know? If you don't take size into... Well, you're taking... We're not taking muscular know. size now as much as we're taking structural size. So there's I know, a very... I know. Hear me out. Hear me out. If we're eliminating structural size, Sean wins the entire show. 100%. Yeah. But, I don't, but I don't think that's what bodybuilding is. I no. agree. Because, like, Franco was better than Arnold. Sure. But Arnold fucking won every time. Yeah. So I think the structure of a person matters or has, or historically has mattered. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, because the show, it, a competition is standing next to other people. Yeah. Like if, the, if, the, if it was, you come out and pose by yourself, well then yeah, Sean would win the show. No doubt. You know, by himself, he is unbeatable, you know? Um, you know, if there's life. any, if there's any flaw to Sean's physique, what would it be in your opinion? Slightly narrow across the chest. That'll be the only sure. one. Yeah. yeah, that's what I think. I think his chest that'll, that'll is. Be it. But like, if, if we're looking at this picture but like, here. But when you stand him next to six foot two or six foot one Samson, that's 285 pounds on stage. Like, what's that going to look like, you know? And, and the answer is, I honestly don't know. I, I do believe Sean could beat these guys, but I, I it's really hard for me to say until I see. I've never seen, like, you know, we saw him next to Regan and, and, uh, Sergio, but those aren't top six Olympia guys, you know? No, no. So we'll take a look here. And we have the eighth place, the sixth place, the third place. And two of those guys are like six foot plus 285 pounds. I know, I know. Dude, that is crazy. Insane. (laughs) It's crazy, man. It's the craziest thing ever. (laughs) Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It's fucking bonkers. And if you've ever just seen the guy in person, how bubbly and round. Oh my god, man! I mean, this crazy. is this is insane. If this was a two hundred and sixty, two hundred and fifty pound, even a two hundred twenty-five pound. Listen, guy, if he was five five, not five one. Yeah, even two, even two fifteen, two twenty, he would yeah. be fucking killing everybody. Yeah, for sure. Like, look at that. That's outrageous. You know. Did you those uh, pictures? Look at those hotel <laughs> pictures. These are nuts, man. Matt showed me these pictures and I like almost shit myself when I saw them. Yeah. The only, like if you have no context, you're like, I'm saying when he's alone, you can't tell, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. The only, the only flaw is the chest is a little narrow, but other than that, he's absolutely, I know. He makes up for it. He makes up for it with massive shoulders, massive shoulders. Yeah. 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 He makes up for it. He he totally fills in the width. Mm -hmm. Huh? Cause he doesn't look structurally narrow. These are the best shots I've seen of him. Look at the shoulders there. Holy fuck. The tricep. <clears throat> like, I think certain shots, like, you know, I do think Nick's most muscular is better, you know, but I think when you lay it across all poses and you, you know, fullness, conditioning, like everything, this is really hard to beat, man. Dude, I mean, it's going to be, it is going to be hard to take someone that good who's going to be that hard and that peaked, regardless of height, to yeah. not reward him. Hundred percent. Like even I agree. To, I agree. Next to I agree to a point. Andrew, yeah. Even standing next to an Andrew who has things that are missing, even though Andrew's phenomenal. I'm not saying he's not, but the conditioning and I don't know, it's gonna be really, it's gonna be fucking interesting. Yeah, it'll be really interesting. 
it's it's a, that's shot, a tough call for a judge. I mean, because it's as a judge, dude. you're laying a very direct line in the sand here of like, no, what do we value more here? You know, or what do I value? Well, more? well, it's very it's not as hard. Okay, I shouldn't say that. I'm going to put this. It's judging is is like it's not one thing or the other, right? It's you're talking about a peak of each criteria. So, like when you're talking at Andrew, let's take Andrew from the Olympia. If Andrew from the Olympia shows up, Sean will beat him. Yeah, because the conditioning is such a discrepancy that they're going to be like, look, we can't, we can't let Sean lose to Andrew if Andrew's not in shape from the back. You think like the Texas Andrew or the if the Texas Andrew might fare a little better, but I'm talking about Samson. Yes, he's not as conditioned as Sean. Maybe mm-hmm. his back is a little bit smaller, but he's way overpowering in so many other ways. Same thing with Nick. Would be like, okay, well, Nick has. Uh, a wider waist than Sean. So maybe Sean has a little bit better symmetry, but Nick has him beat everywhere else. Yeah. So it's like, it's Multiple conditioning and fullness and, and be- bigger, but be- you know, yeah. So it's hard to say, like, it's hard for me to look and say, Sean can beat Nick. No, I don't, I don't think yeah, Sean can I, beat Nick. Yeah. I think Nick is way too good for that. Um, but the other ones is a question mark because, well, because there's that open door with conditioning where Nick does not have that open door, but Nick I has everything dialed in posing fullness conditioning is all good. You know, Okay, Samson from pre-judging at the Olympia. What do you think? Sean beat him? <sighs> because at pre-judging, he was sharper than Knight. This is the, this is the thing. I, I, I don't see in that lineup that, and this is like kind of a weird way of looking about it, but they put him in sixth. I, I don't see, I see it's still a pretty far gap from, of Sean trying to beat Rami, you know? Yeah. Like Rami's fifth, you know, and, and right there, and him and Samson were relatively close. But I, yeah. I, I don't see, I don't see that Sean could stand next to and beat Rami, you know. Yeah, and I think you could have argued that Samson could have beat. Rami. Yeah, where that's when I look at it, I try and put Sean in other contexts, and it gets a little harder for me, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, what is yeah? <laughs> if we look at if we look at Sean and we look at Samson, the only areas where he's beating him, if you would say beating him would be rounder shoulders, a more complete back, and probably conditioning is better. For sure, yeah. Is that enough to beat him in all the other areas? That's that's what I'm saying. You're laying, yeah. you're drawing a line in the sand there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think you can have it both ways, right? Because if you look at the Olympia winners, if you look at Hottie, he was not as in shape as Derek. But he had well, a beat. But he had a beat. Was. No, not from the back. Not from the back, but from the front, he was in better condition than Derek. Yeah, so they kind of yeah, that's they kind of just yeah. they kind of just called that a dead heat. Like it's like he's harder through the quads, the abs, the chest. Definitely. Okay, 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 fine. Then let's use this example. Brandon was not as in good condition as Rami. Absolutely not. But they still gave Brandon the victory. Yes, over Rami. Well, I mean, and even with you know, even with uh, with Samson. I mean, he obviously he wasn't in as good a condition as Hunter or some of the guys below him. I think you know, he was. I think he was. No, I don't agree. But I, no. but I think he, Samson. I mean, what I are we Samson, judging his conditioning then? Like, I, I, it's hard to say because like where he gets his conditioning in the back and the glutes and the hams just isn't the same as other guys. But I don't know. Is like, is that what we're judging? I think in, I the, I think in the glutes. I think if in the in the glutes, but that's also because of the way he poses, he pushes them out. Yeah, you know, but if, if you if you said to me if you if you said to me Hunter had harder glutes than Samson, I would say yes. If you said yeah, see, and this is this is where it gets tricky because like. In my opinion, you're only as lean as your fattest part, you know? I see, but that's not, really, see, that's not really the truth. I'll, but I'll say this. Samson doesn't see it that way because I know when we were looking at physique shots of him and Rami together, I think I specifically asked him what he thought. And he said, Rami's got me on the glutes, but I got him everywhere else. Yeah, see, that's and that's that's where so, it gets so not everybody, you. So not everybody looks at it like, well, your glutes are the, are the, are the data point that I'm looking at. Right? No, you're looking at like the... you could you could turn Samson from the front, from the front and he has cross striated quads, you know, his abs. No, no, but it, not, not even that. If you took if you took Hunter and you took Samson and you put them side by side, Hunter or, or Samson is in better condition or at least the same as Hunter everywhere except for the glutes. I'd need to see that next to each other to know, but I think I might agree with what you're saying though. 
I, I see what you're saying. But a different skin texture that doesn't allow you to see the conditioning as well with Samson as well. I'll say that. Well, I'm I'm just saying from what I saw, what they yeah. presented on stage, right? Like, yeah. and I, and I'm a fan of Hunter. Like I thought Hunter. No, no, and like and look, no, I, I'm, I don't. I'm not arguing for one second that I think Hunter should have beat Andrew. I, there's you know, also like a peaking issue with Hunter, so I don't think we got to see his his best conditioning. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm just trying to make the point that at some point in the judges' eyes conditioning doesn't matter because Brandon no, I, was I 100% agree. Yeah, so that's well, why we, we've seen it we've seen it with Martin and Andrew where Martin was way harder than Andrew. That's right. That's yeah. right. In in uh, Arnold, right? Was it the Arnold UK? The Texas and Arnold. And the Texas, yeah. They both did yeah. compete yeah. both the shows. Yeah. I mean, I've lost many shows where I was the hardest guy in the show, you know. And honestly, I think Martin is more complete, would you say? Sure. I mean, he's not really missing anything. He's just he's just we've had this discussion before too though. Sometimes complete is less impressive than Wow, Freak. that's what yeah. we're talking. Kind yeah. of the thing we're talking about with yeah. with with Sean. Yeah. So when Sean stands next to Samson, for example, he may be harder, but is he going to be as wow when you're seeing yeah. that six foot? Because I know when Samson stood next to fucking Rami, I was like, Dude. holy! I was like, holy! Anybody shit. who's I, standing next to Samson in the fucking booth, I was like, wow! Yeah. I'm so no, you <laughs> Samson really. That was really good for him that he had that initial opportunity to stand next to the previous Mr. Olympia and yes. look real fucking good next to him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. like, if he was staying next to, like, I don't know, one of the guys from the fourth call out, it's a little different, you know? Yeah. yeah. And like, not to get... say he wouldn't have ended up in that same position, but it's definitely a, a leg up when you get to stand next to the champ and look good, you know? Yeah. You have an automatic look. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to get roasted for this, but I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying the fucking hate. So I'm going to keep going with it. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think Andrew Jack is going to have a problem. And I, I hope I'm wrong because he seems like a super nice guy. But mm -hmm. the only, the only reason I say that is he's been dieting for like a fucking year. Dude, I don't, I don't see things progressing with all the opportunities he's had to improve and coming up short every time. I don't anticipate this being the, well, Bingo moment, you know. The only the only thing is, people are like, "Well, he was sick as he was prepping for the Olympia." Sure, he was sick, but was he sick from the Texas to the Arnold to the, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know. My 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 thought process is he. I expect him to look the exact same as he did in every other show. Yeah, because yeah. my thought process is he uh, got his pro card last year, and then he took a few, probably a couple months off, and then he started getting ready for Texas, Arnold, Olympia, and now Arnold again. It's like, how long can you fucking diet? Dude. Before your before your body's like, hey, fuck off, man. I need a break. He's tired. That's probably why he was sick at the fucking Olympia. He's tired. Yeah. So it's yeah, like you, I, don't think, I think did you I touch base guy at all. Sorry. Sorry. Did you Sorry. touch base guy at all? Uh I haven't did heard him? from guy, no. I just texted him and he sent me a picture. Uh ask him if he's coming on. Or if he doesn't want to, we'll just talk. We'll call him yeah. after. Um Listen, I, I'm happy for Andrew that he jumped in. I hope we're fucking. I hope I'm really wrong. I would love to see Andrew hit it just because he's so phenomenal. Like his, his physique is fucking really impressive. Dude, amazing. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I don't, just, say, I don't say any of that to like take digs at the guy. I'm just no like, being just, objective, looking at track record, batting averages matter. Like what we've seen so far. How? Why? Why would we have the reason to well, think? Bat batting average is one, but also just the duration of time under for that sure. stress. Under I that stress, yes. I think yeah. all these things added. I think it's more against him than for him. Now. But you could also say that him dieting longer would be beneficial for his conditioning. I was actually is just going to say, he work, uh, is he still working with uh, George? George, I'm not sure. I think so. I, I I don't know, but I think um, what I was going to say is guys like him and Samson tend to hold on to their they're like they're freaks they're fucking big huge motherfuckers with a lot of muscle and i think if anybody can diet for a year and hold on to their size and all that it's probably andrew yeah yeah so yeah. like ian could be right he could who knows maybe dieting the extra fucking 10 weeks or whatever it is could make him look better yeah i, I don't think you'll be i think we all want to see it it's not like we're saying any of these things hoping he doesn't show up. <laughs> i guess I i'm saying relatively the same maybe slightly better condition i guess i'm saying if i have to bet my test testicles on it i'm not taking that bet on him being improved like much improved i'm gonna say he's fourth i i don't i think you'll have a hard time beating sean yes i think so too but I, we see have... it, I see it nick samson sean or nick sean samson and then we have justin, Ro justin rodriguez bonak akeem yeah oh we forgot fucking bonak he could be fifth Bonac's the next put highest placing he's right after andrew in the Olympics. i actually and this is a thing about bonak because i just i think bonak will be better he's always better at the arnold I, I just did a, a video about that, I think. 
Yeah, I think well, I expect him to be good. I think he had a distended stomach, and bringing that stomach in is going to change his placing dramatically. Big time. Yeah, no, I I think him and Andrew will probably battle for that spot right after Sean. You think or so? right around Sean. I think they'll kind of all be like the third, four, five, three, four, wait, five. Wait, wait, wait. Let me make it more specific. If Bonac shows up like he did at the last Arnold, where do you see him? Oh, like the last Arnold? I mean, he could be as high as second. I don't think he could beat Nick. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I that's what yeah. I was that's what I'm thinking. Like he's yeah. gonna, I think he he's I, I think he's one year older and he's not getting any younger, obviously. So I don't expect him to be as good as last year's Arnold. The thing um, is with, with Sean, he's just so fucking consistent and always no, Sean will be perfect. There's no doubt. Sean will not be even one percent off like he never is, you know. So so will Nick. I'm assuming so will Nick. Will no, be, I mean yeah. Matt has got those guys down to a fine art. Like I don't think yeah. those guys are fucking anything up, you know. <clears throat> are you guys gonna uh, and I also think they're just that good, like either way, you know. Are you guys gonna right. shit shit the bed if I go take a piss? No. Okay. We're just I mean, gonna yeah, sit here and complete maybe. we're just gonna sit here in complete silence for four minutes. <laughs> we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about optimal training. Oh, perfect. <laughs> No, I, I don't think. Uh, yeah, no. Fuck. I don't think Bonac will be as good though, for sure. No, I don't really feel like it. So Melissa messaged Jasmine about going on a ski trip. Yeah, did she? Yeah, did she talk to you about this? Melissa's got her dick so hard about snowboarding right now. After we oh, went there, yeah, yeah. there's a place here we went on like Chris and Courtney and their parents over Christmas, mm-hmm. and she like got back on a board for the first time since like ten years, and she all she wants to do now is snowboard. Like every weekend, awesome. she's like. Yeah, we went the other day, like just here in Ottawa, like went snowboarding. She just wants to go. I've like, seen that. I know I haven't gone in like six years now. There's Jasmine, but she was she was pretty excited to to maybe do, do something. Yeah, no. Well, the guy just texted me back. He said, <clears throat> "When do you start?" I mean, we're gonna be on for ah uh, shit. We've been on for almost two hours. Yeah, but we didn't talk for the first thirty minutes, so we probably right. only been on the podcast for like an hour and twenty minutes. So, but uh, yeah, that'd be I don't know. It'd be cool. It'd be fun. Yeah, you got to get back on a board. For I know, sure. I really want to get back on a board. I don't really have anybody that I could go with, like, my brother or something, but I don't know. It'd be, be nice you to get good back. places close to where you live. Yeah, we have good mountains right here. Yeah. Yeah. But it'd be nice to get away. He guy says he's going to come on, getting his computer. But yeah. I would I would love to do, like, a, like a getaway, go stay at a fucking for sure. yeah. nice resort for a few days. Yeah, yeah. But. I admit once you once you get back on and especially since we went the second time like the first time trombone was like I had a good time yeah but like, I still was very apprehensive you know oh, I bet. like and as the day went on like I didn't get really less apprehensive I kind of did like two runs in and then I got like more scared as the day went on but then we went a second time this past week um to like a, a less busy hill and that what like you know just like chill yeah, um, and like by the end of the day, there I'm like, fuck, I'm back to. 100%. I've just been seeing, I've been seeing so much like snowboard content popping up on yeah. my shit. I've been engaging with it. Yeah, I, just, I feel like I'm gonna just, just fall right back in. Feel you good. will. You'll, you'll, you'll feel weird for like the first fifteen seconds on a board until yeah. you do like one heel side and one toe side carve, and then you'll be yeah, like, oh yeah. yeah, that's what it feels like. I'm good. Yeah. One, it takes one run to feel seventy five to eighty percent back to the best you ever were. Yeah, the things totally. that like you know your equilibrium jumping when you're like way heavier obviously has gone to shit. Yeah, I don't like, want to jump. I have no, no desire. Your body doesn't move through the air nearly. I just want. Air. I just. I just want to glide and carve down a hill and yeah. fucking. Honestly, yeah. I actually feel like I got better, even though I don't have the same balls to go the same speeds. I feel like I got better in that aspect because I'm just like older and smarter, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Like more, know. In tune, more in tune with my body, so I can like feel what i'm trying to do better you know yeah. when i'm like when yeah. i was like snowboarding at like 16 like i didn't know shit i was pretty reckless i was just blazing you just didn't know your body you're just fucking carving hard and going fast yeah. you know? uh-huh. <laughs> where now i'm like oh i feel i feel like i know what to do with my body better you know Our, your mind muscle connections better yeah exactly are you guys having your own from all my optimal training yeah we're good you can just <laughs> <up>. okay <laughs> guy said he was gonna jump on for the last little bit oh. <laughs> there you go <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> What's going on? Okay. Uh, you guys want to do some questions before we go? Yeah. Okay. Guy said he was going to jump off. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah. He said, uh, be on in five, getting his computer. You um, got to send him the link then. I did. Um, he said, don't, don't bring it up. What was the, the fourth person that you said I saw the link to was sent to? That was Guy. No. Oh, originally. Uh, that's yeah. a surpri- surprise for next week. Okay. I saw it. I'm like, oh, is he on here? I didn't see that. Who is- Does it say who it is? Yeah, go look at your email. Don't say. Now I'm curious. I won't say it out loud. 
Um, that's why I didn't say that. I'm just in case. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's good here. Why do a lot of bodybuilders shave their beards for the stage? Does it take away from the physique or is it just preference? Whenever I, I get close to a show, I just want to shave my beard off. I, I feel like I feel like maybe it like shows conditioning better. <laughs> I think we'll show that sunken face. I yeah. think I think until our generation though, I think clean shaving it to go on stage was kind of the norm. Like you won't see I guys can. in the 90s and early 2000s with beards, man. I think it was expected though. I think the, yeah. ju the judges were like shave that shit. Clean cut. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now I think it's a little bit more accepted, but I also think it's more of the reverse question, which is we're fat in the off season, so we grow the beard. Oh, to like dude, I, 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 I keep this going right here because you have that. You have that. Oh, yeah, you got a neck beard. See, I don't. I don't go that low. I, no, do, I didn't I, go. I mean, it's still like to here, but you gotta hide the extra piece. Yeah, you gotta hide this fucking. My other like line up like this. <laughs> no good. Uh, are you and Guy gonna collab his new podcast with Bro Chat? I'm not sure how we would do that. It's just if he came exactly. on, It'd be it exactly. would just be it would just be bro chat. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on what happened to Demar Hamlin? We talked about that. Who can eat the most? Oh, the football yeah. player. The football player. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Ronnie, uh, uh, Jeremy Renner. Fuck. Oh what yeah. Jeremy, what happened to Jeremy Renner? He got ran over by a fucking snowplow, dude. Yeah. I think he might have got his leg amputated. There's like rumors saying he had it amputated. Yeah, he oh, got real boy. fucked up. Yeah, he got fucked up big time. Holy shit. There's like pictures of snowplow. I mean, he's a big fucking snowplow. I found a, I found a video of Guy Cisternino I want to show. <laughs> Guy, you there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold yeah. On. <laughs> Am I on? Am I on? This thing Hi, working? Guy. What's up? <laughs> Guy, I found a video of you. Check it out. <laughs> Road rage. <laughs> You guys got to see if I can make it bigger. Hold on. Yo, this guy's in a rush, eh? Guy's for sure driving the truck. <laughs> Look, he speeds up to try and block him. Guy swerves anyway. Oh, oh. Holy shit. Oh, oh he's toasted. Oh, oh my God. God. He's toasted. Holy <laughs> shit. The truck was trying to block him the whole fucking time. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> he tries. I bet that guy in the truck. I mean, it wasn't really his fault, but. Would you feel bad if that was you driving the truck? Yeah, absolutely not. But he was trying to block him. It wasn't like he was trying to let him go. Like, see, he sped up there to try yeah, and stop. He played, he played yeah, but that's, that's. This, this, this was the problem. <laughs> what? The fucking wall? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the wall the was the problem. <laughs> the, the earth. Him trying to split them down the fucking middle. That was okay. So I have a question for you guys because I read, I saw this on TikTok to begin with, and uh, I read the comments, and everybody in the comments section is blaming the truck driver, the guy driving no. the white, the dry guy driving well, the yeah, white. Yeah, because people are going to say, people are going to say that he's in the left lane, and if you're in the left lane, you should be going faster than all of traffic. But that guy in the middle lane was breaking every law known to mankind. Yeah. So the yeah. argument. And we've Wait, all also the there's been, two, there's two, we've there's all done it. I've done it. I've done and I've been, I've been both. We've yeah. all been in the fucking left lane going okay, 85 wait. passing and somebody's riding our fucking ass. Or we're going 90 passing. This is two different things here because the the guy in the car was breaking a bunch of laws. But that doesn't mean that the guy should then instigate like we all would be like fuck this motherfucker. Yeah. We're all going to speed up. Right, Jackson. <laughs> but if when we then block him from, you know, I don't know because yeah, he's hey, still, let me, let me make it more specific. He question. didn't block him from anything. He just, no, it's, also, did, it's did. also your, it's also your no, own getting, driver he's to he's check getting into the merge. fast lane. Okay. Wait, yeah, he, he, also did, he, check before he, merged, but he did, him? he did block him because he went around and he would have been able to pass the truck, but the truck fucking sped up. Yeah, but He went around on the fucking shoulder, dude. Yeah. yeah, but that has nothing to do with the truck. Went the around truck, on the fucking earth. Had the truck had the truck kept his speed the same, he would have gone around on the shoulder. Of course, he was, he was antagonizing the situation. Yeah, the truck that. clearly broke laws, but the guy in the car broke. So, a law. Uh, my question then specifically is: If you looked in your rearview mirror and the guy flipped his fucking car, would you oh. laugh or would you just keep driving and feel horrible? No, I would stop. I would stop. stop. I would stop. Yeah, I would stop. stop. Sure. I don't believe you. I don't believe any of you. Bro, the oh, guy just would, turned yeah. his guy's car just turned into a slinky. I would have stopped. <laughs> like I would have stopped, bro. Like I absolutely, I would have stopped. I don't know if I would have stopped. 
who knows that guy might have been pretty unstable in that car hey wait a guy hit my a guy hit my car i chased him on his bike he yes, crashed he and i stopped guy i believe you would stop i don't believe ian or justin no, nah, I'm going to the gym. I especially, right. especially don't believe Justin. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I would stop. I don't Justin think. is a secret. Justin would be like, a... I've been through worse. He's fine. <laughs> Justin is secretly <laughs> kind of a dick. I think Justin's like, I'm late. I got to go. And No, that was pretty serious. I think I'd stop. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd stop. Okay, you know, what, would it... you, what would you do if you stopped? Oh, I'm sorry. I fucked with you and you flipped your car. Well, I'd try to help him out of the car, make sure he's not fucking. I don't dead. think he'd remember who you were after all that. He probably had no recollection of what the fuck. He's he gonna got. see the white truck and then go into rage mode. I would feel horrible about myself. I don't know what I. I you honestly don't know what I would do. I, know what I would do. I would. Wait, just, you would take blame for that? I would. I would stop and feel bad for the guy in the car, but I wouldn't feel bad for my actions. No, I would get I out. To of the car. I totally would. Listen. No, I would not. The guy in the car was an idiot, but you have to admit the truck fucking. Yeah. I would check it out. But the truck almost fucking crashed too. No shit. No, the truck swerved off the road. No, I said the, guy, the truck still almost crashed. Yeah, yeah. So no, I, I don't I wouldn't have felt bad for the guy in the car. I would have yeah. helped him out of his truck his car and then and be like out of him. <laughs> when the cops get here, you're saying you just lost control and went off the road, or we're both getting a fucking pile of garbage here. So let's just leave it at that. You know, we are both fucking retards here. Let's just move the fuck on. Get your shit um, fixed. No, I'm, I'd be like, take the L. The wrong. I'd be like, you lost. Take the L. I won. I'm, yeah. I'm blazing, going home and checking the news later. Yeah. <laughs> I believe Justin's the only one I believe in this. For sure. I'm like, Fuck, this. <laughs> fuck that. You fucked with me. I and fucked whoever with that guy was was clearly unstable. I don't want to fuck with that guy. Especially. I'm like, look, we <laughs> fucked. We fucked around with each other, and I and you lost. I'm gone. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, nice buddy. Loser. Depends where it was. If I was in South Florida, I might not pull over because there's some crazy motherfuckers down there, and I yeah, don't feel like I'm shot. But if, in Ottawa. if that was in Ottawa, I'm I'm pulling over for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you are right, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and they're gonna bad, probably be a lot more scared idea. of me once they see me outside the car. You know. <clears throat> yeah. That, was, that a was too connected to the last word. You need to fix. You need to fix that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right? there's, a, there's a little bit. There's a little gap. It's a small gap. It's less accentuated as an A, and it's more just like A, you know? Like, What's this yeah. all about? What happened? <laughs> I've, never, remember, I've, never, I've never gotten remember Joe, right? Joe, what's up, man? How are you? Yeah. He, he was, he well, was that's, a super, that's a he was super fired. East Coast thing. A boot? That's like super East Coast, isn't it? Or is that I've like never, Alberta? A boot? Yeah, like people, a boot. people say that we say about a boot, and I've never said a boot in my life. Well, I say about. About. Yeah. About. yeah. yeah. about what? But I think when you yeah. go like when you go to like Newfoundland, people speak pretty fucking weird, man. Yeah, I know. Guy, ask your buddies. Did they see the truck video or no? Yes. Ask them what they think. I did that this week. The whole screw. Yeah. What'd you say? What'd you say, Joe? I, I, did, I did that this week. At least once. You did that last week. <laughs> just made a car flip over. Did what? Fuck this guy. You guys, I, just by looking at you, I'm like, oh, these guys are gonna keep driving. They're not yeah. stopping. <laughs> would you would you stop? Someone, someone hit me. Someone hit me on the highway, going eighty miles an hour, and kept driving. You oh, caught him, and I, I caught him. And then what? You beat the shit out of him, or I called, the, the, cops? I called the cops? I'm not legally allowed to talk about I, it. I chased him until the cops came. Are you serious? Swear to God. Holy shit! What's wrong with you guys? You guys always got these fucking car stories too. It's right. You guys are you not a fucking driving. They're all validated. Jersey, which is crazy. That's what happens in New Jersey? Mm-hmm. You guys need to fucking move. That's what happens when uh, in New Jersey, eh? Yeah, I know. I know. Hey, I would. That I was the most. That's the most New Jersey thing I've ever heard on the podcast. I went to. A, I went to Italian food last night, and I got some rice bowls. Rice bowls. Rice bowls. Rice bowls. Yeah, I did. Bowls. <laughs> I Bro, that, nice was a, that was that was that was the live podcast. Bowls or bowls? Paul Paul <laughs> said that. Paul said that bowls? at the Olympia. Rice bowls. Remember? Bowls? You're, you're, do you remember that, Justin? No. What did he say? Paul pronounces balls bowls. Does he? Yeah. We were That's standing weird. there. We, la- we were laughing at me. You and Jasmine were standing there. I don't he's remember. He's Canadian as fuck. That's weird uh, that he would say that. But he's also Italian. Yeah, that's mm. true. Anyway, Guy, how are you doing? You're a little late today. I mean, we're right at the end. But it's nice to see you. I'm glad you came. We missed you. Yeah. It was really quiet. We had a very good, long conversation with no interruptions. I got some questions. I hurt myself. I fucking whatever. I hurt myself. I hurt my leg tonight, guys. How'd you so, hurt yourself? You, want to you talk didn't about need it? to talk about it. You said you didn't want to talk about it. That's All right. Fine. Sorry, I just, I don't know what I did, but I'm, I'm yeah. It's better that you talk about it, man. It's life. Yeah. So what happened? I fucking was doing squats with. You have the video? Yes. Did I say? Did you, let me guess. Four plates. 
Barbell squats? What were you? What, what I was doing squat? like a power squat machine. Uh, okay. You were going heavy? No, I mean seven plates. I don't know what the – oh, you mean like a Rogers power squat? Yeah, no, like the football squat. I'll show yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's like a body seven. master's like a body master's power squat. Yeah, yeah I did leg extensions first. Seven's not lit, light on that. No, it's no, not, it wasn't. It's, heavy, it's not super heavy. It's no, like it's not super heavy. heavy. No, yeah. Um, we did uh, extend. I warmed up the three sets of extensions first, holding them three seconds at the top. Three sets, twelve reps. One went over. Warmed up. One plate, two plate, three plate, four plate, and then we went four to four to yeah, seven. Five, five, seven. five to seven. Did you and do fucking, anything? Did you do anything before leg extensions? I warmed up with leg extensions. Yeah, I warmed up with leg extensions, then I went over the squats, and then no, I no. started. I know, but did you do anything before leg extensions, or you just did all your warm-ups? You know funny? You know it's fucking funny? It's the first fucking time in probably three years I walked in, and I go, let's do leg extensions before hamstrings. I haven't done that in fucking five years. Because you got it from John, too, right? Doing leg, extens- doing leg curls first. I have not done leg extensions first before hamstrings, and I did it today before doing any abductors and yep. any hamstring. Yep. But, but... I got right where I fucking think I tore something. I got fucking tased in the leg. The, the same fucking spot on Monday. Yeah. You got tased? And I tased you. <laughs> yes. What the fuck it's did you get tased at? For the, the, the fucking breeze to tase Wait, 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 wait. What the fuck? There's a restraining you. order. You can't talk about it. Wait a minute. Can you <laughs> talk, what the fuck is wrong with your life? Is it on is it on it's my it's YouTube? It's on yeah. YouTube. <laughs> I didn't watch your YouTube. You don't watch mine. Tell me what happened. Yes, I do. Oh my god. <laughs> Tell me what I happened. Got, I got so I went to my buddy's store. You have it on your thing. It's on. I got he's he had a taser. It was nine hundred and fifty. If you guys, if you guys want to watch it, go to guys YouTube. He just did a video about it. But tell me what happened. That was a great thousand. pitch. Just well, I'm just trying to try to direct traffic to your I know, channel. Just, I mean, replay that twice for the audience. It was so good. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you guys listen, if you guys want to watch the best, the best YouTube <laughs> channel on fucking YouTube, there's this little fucking short Italian guy, sister, sister Nino. He has this YouTube channel. It's the best. Nobody production. has walls like guy. Best production value yes. on YouTube. Go to his channel. Check out the last video. Is that better? I tear a quad. I come here and get character assassination. <laughs> <laughs> I'm promoting yeah, your channel. I'm texting you. I'm like, come on, guy. Log in and make you feel better. <laughs> um, what were we even talking about? How did you get tased? You get tased, yeah. Oh, so I went to my buddy's <laughs> store. So I had a fan who bought me a gun. And got it seracoded and sent it to the shop. And he goes, Hey, like, I'm a fan. I sent you a gun. Like, thanks for what you do. But like, so I went to go pick up the gun with my buddies. And my buddy had a taser. He was saying he had these tasers he was selling. And he's like, Let me tase you. Oh, and I no. go, Have you done it before? And he goes, Yeah. And it was a lie, right? I didn't know that. I thought he was being serious. I thought he actually tased the guy in the store and he didn't. And it was 950,000 volts. And I let him tase me in the leg and it hurt real, real bad. Oh, so it's still Dude. inflamed. And I think I tore, I, I literally tore in the same, the right where he got so, me is exactly where I think I tore something. So you leg. don't think you didn't tear it like on the tendon, tear it at the tendon? No, I, I can, I, this is the thing. No, like, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, guy. Wait a minute. You don't know where you tore yet. Did you tell I th- it? I'm, I'm pretty certain I can show you. Okay. Is it in the belly of the muscle? It, it's up. It's up. I have ice on it. It's up here. Show me. It's oh, up. Okay, okay. That's not bad, here. dude. That's not bad. You're fine. Oh, it, it's it's it's. No, no, no. <laughs> I've, I know you're in pain. I've had tears it's, there before. No, they, I, it, can you not see it? No, no. But listen, but you are but you are on your feet and walking. No, and... no, no. The point is this: if if it's in the belly of the muscle, it will heal much faster. Yeah, it wasn't it, the it, tendon. It was like the muscle. Like, but I don't. Uh, this is this. Like it was the muscle the last time. The it way was. you, yeah, but the way you. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. What I'm saying is, is I have never torn a muscle. Okay, I retire. I've torn the belly of my quad or something in my quad now twice, and I don't just don't understand how that keeps happening. Well, one, you, do you know that every year you get one year old. Like, than like guy. who had called me, and I was, I was like so upset on the phone because I'm. It's not even upset that I, I don't care that if I tore something. I'm like. I was upset. I'm like, I just, I'm, I'm going to have to stop training how I know how to train. And that's like, that's, that's, that's a hard reality to come to. Like, I don't, it's hard for me to walk into the gym and not do what I do, how I do it. Welcome to my world. 
It sucks. That's what happens, that's what happens you get older. Plus, you got to think, guy. This is a bunch of different things since you retired. You're on less gear, so there's less less water retention, less protection. If I even remember to take. You're on. That's right. That's number one. You're probably drinking less water. Your yeah. diet. Your diet's probably different. All these things play a factor, and then you're trying to still lift the same way you did. Not to mention your leg was probably still inflamed from being tased. Yeah, I can't believe that. I so, totally forgot. But he's like, "Isn't that right where you got tased?" And I was like. The positive news is when I heard you on the phone, I thought it was the quad tendon, which is much more severe. That will no, be I, fine. I told you it wasn't. I said it yeah, was. That'll be fine in two to four weeks, man. No. <laughs> no, probably like four to six, but yeah, I mean, still. Depends. depends, like, depends. You, can, what, you can see where I tore it. That, that's it's fine. Visible. I've had the same tear. I know exactly where you tore it. Like, oh. it literally felt like I had a shirt on and some, and it went like this. Yeah. But depending on how well you take care of it, it might be four weeks, like max. So just, you know, a lot of ice, a lot of, you can't do therapy yet, but once, no. like after the swelling, after the swelling goes down, you start getting therapies. And I think by tomorrow morning, I'll know yeah. how fucking bad it is, I guess. I'm just fucking. Either way, that's a big bummer. Just beside myself. And you just train yeah. everything else. You'll be all right. Train one leg and train the rest of your body. Well, your quads were your best body parts. So now you just get to hammer your arms. Now yeah. I'm now I'm Tordro. <laughs> yeah, but post retirement you don't need legs. You only need the muscles that like look good when you're. Ian, I have nothing else. I got. I got Ian, no, but Ian's right because you know what? If I it's had... like a guy that doesn't bodybuild. Why would like why would my buddy Mike who like doesn't bodybuild ever train his legs? He doesn't. It's like just go train arms and chest yeah. and upper like, back and shit. Like, you want to like good look good on the beach and like on a jet ski. Uh, no uh, legs bodies. on a jet ski. If I had my choice of what was going to deteriorate after retirement, I would be like Eggs. everything, everything except for my shoulders and arms. Yeah. My dick. I don't want to lose yeah. my dick. Wow. <laughs> the problem is I never had good shoulders. I, my shoulders are shot. <laughs> I went to the show. I, went, I almost sent you a picture of my Guy. shoulders. Guy. I went to the, I, no one cares. You no, fucking no, old man. No one cares anymore about us being in shape. I know. Why do you think I eat a pizza every night? <laughs> I, I know. No. <laughs> Nobody fucking gives a shit. Oh, earlier I was like, how much do I get? Two sixty three. I ate a pizza last night. <laughs> so uh, we were talking on the phone, and I go, admit, he, we were talking about something completely out, and I just stopped, and I was like, what do you weigh? And he's like, two sixty three. And I go, huh? What do you eat? And he goes, let me let me guess. And he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, but I did have a large pizza last night. <laughs> but I have a system. I told these guys when you were on. I said I, he I was honest though. He told us two sixty three as well today. So yeah, I, let, me, I, let me guess, Fuad. Yeah. Did, did your IBS flare up today? <laughs> <laughs> I okay. Wait. Okay. Uh, because because you brought that up. No, okay. listen, because you brought that up, I'm going to tell you something really really fucked up, and you're not going to believe me. But I promise you, it's the okay. fucking. I promise you, it's the fucking truth. All right. Let's hear it. The cleaner I eat, the worse my IBS is. Bullshit. I swear Bullshit. to God, I'm not. Bullshit. I knew you were going to say Justin, ready for this? Justin, the less, Justin, the less steroids I take, the bigger I get. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> that's, like, that's what you sound like. Listen, that's so ridiculous. I'm sound. telling you, yeah, right? Is that is not that ridiculous? It sounds... Listen, I'm just telling you my from my experience. No, when's I, the last time you even spent like a few weeks without eating garbage? You lost before all the, credibility before, here. No, no, before the Olympia. And your digestion just started going down. It went <laughs> horrible. <laughs> no my, my IBS was so bad. After Did you imagine Olympia, something like no? Because it was purging your system. No, listen. After the Olympia, after the Olympia, I, go ahead. Go. I want to hear this. I was saying, after I want to hear this lie. I want to hear this lie. No, it's. I swear to God, it's the truth. After the Olympia, I started eating like kind of shitty. All of a sudden, my like everything got better. Yeah, what, were you imagine- doing, what were you doing during the Olympia? That so that you were having issues that time. What do you mean? During the Olympia, you were you weren't eating good. Yeah, but it's it's a weekly thing. Like I'm saying, like the weeks leading up to the Olympia were worse than the weeks after the Olympia when I was eating some garbage. I even talked to Chris Tuttle about this. Imagine said, being like this. Chris Tuttle. Like, Chris Tuttle said to me, "Some people need some garbage." So the the pizza some people are full line. of garbage. <laughs> I know you guys don't believe me. I swear to God. I said this. Well, to hold my on. Wait, wait, just ready. I think at that point, imagine being like, oh. you're eating so much garbage when you start. To... Wait, oh, Ian's summer. Kind of, Ian's kind all of... this clean food. I'm eating so healthy. I- I'm pooping so bad. My stomach's killing me. 
Go get me that Domino's and burger, please. I'm I telling you. Oh my I, need, I need ice cream to fix my fucking diarrhea. Guys, yeah. I'm gonna... Go get me a Slurpee. <laughs> I think at that point, you've just been eating so much shitty food. When you ate the clean food, it like shocked your body. Maybe. And then it needed to adjust the clean food again, and you would have been fine. I'm telling you the truth. I swear. I don't know. I can't. I got to swear on something. So wait, I'm when you were you. bodybuilding, this wasn't the same. When you were prepping for a show and eating perfect, your digestion was not fucking diarrhea every day. No, this has only been the last like three years I've noticed this pattern. Wait, speaking of so diarrhea, as you eat more garbage, your digestion has got worse, is what you're saying. Yes. Because post retirement, you've eaten more garbage and you've had more digestive issues. Yes, but acutely, acutely. In, the, in, the, in the moment. <laughs> When I eat garbage, I have better bowel movements. It also just doesn't work like that. Like, I'm stuck on, I'm still stuck you on can't, it. You can't expect like your, your ahead, gut biome or digestion to be optimized after 10 days of eating clean. Would you guys just, I'm, I'm just telling you what I've noted. Look it. Okay, you it's anecdotal. You, I get come, it. You come at me with your shit. All I'm saying is, this is what has been happening. <laughs> take, take it or leave it. This Did you say it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> we hear you. We hear you. Okay. okay. Ian, Ian had some good questions lined up. Yeah. Sorry. Acute. Well, did you say that earlier? Guy had a guy had a what? What's wrong oh, with did that? Did you say acute? Yeah. I'm acute. still stuck on acute. Why? Why? Because I don't know how you incorporate acute into this whole entire topic. Acute like, meaning, meaning an acute response. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, he didn't say it. You were talking it, about it, diarrhea. Do any of you guys have any contraptions in your house that clean your butt? Oh, like, like, a, like a bidet? I wish. I you, mean like, you mean like clean your butt on the outside? So or I bought, he talked, <laughs> in, he talked me in to buy in. Uh, Tushies. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's so like he dish. is, he is obsessed with them. At it. He has them at his, in every toilet in his house. So yeah. I bought one, but I didn't, I didn't hook it up yet, but I was wondering if there's Oh man, they're fucking, a, yo, Dude, like any, any of those horrible? bidet things are amazing. They're awesome. Mean, it hoses the poop off your butt. It's great. It feels so good, man. You'll just sit on there for enjoyment. It feels so good. <laughs> You just open up your hole and just let it go in. Literally, man. Wow. We were staying at an Airbnb in Vancouver for Vancouver Pro, me, Julian, and Mark. And we, like, we literally sit on the toilets for like 20 minutes each, just fucking having the bidet spray. That's not what I have. Blasting your no, asshole. You just sit there jerking off the thing. This guy's having a great time. Look. Oh, dude. Yeah. There you go, guy. Look at that. Ah, that's me. Life size. <laughs> <laughs> The guy's sucking his own See, this, this, his this, this little sprout comes out and it sprays your butt. Sprays your butthole. Yeah, I have a bidet. That's what I do. Yeah. yeah, it feels awesome. Yeah. Like you like 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 that you take it and spray? No, no, I have like a oh. separate toilet. It's a, yeah, it's a separate thing. A separate thing. No, he has a, a squirt bottle that you just use that. <laughs> so I have like a toilet and then beside it, beside it, I have a bidet. You use you have it? A separate bidet? Yeah, see, I I want just a toilet. You use it? Oh uh, yeah. Every time? Not every time. Depends how lazy I'm feeling. <laughs> really? Depends how good his digestion is. is that, if, I'm eating, <laughs> if I'm eating pizza, I don't use it. Don't eat it. It's like a... What is he, is he eating and rice? Rice. If I'm eating chicken and rice, I'm on that thing. Go up in that bidet. <laughs> yeah. He's so sore from wiping, he's got to get on the bidet. It's I wonder <laughs> I wonder what in your clean food you're eating that your body's disagreeing with. There's, I wonder there's the same be thing. I think, it's, <laughs> I think it's just there's not enough fat in grease. <laughs> you probably just have like a, a like a you just can't digest chicken well or something. And Your no. philosophies are so good. You should actually write a book. I It'd think it's the color. dough. I think I yeast. need more grease. I think it's the dough and the yeast. It's Start adding grease to your chicken. It solidifies all the things that make your digestion worse. <laughs> this episode's gonna fucking clog so many people's arteries. <laughs> no, because <laughs> listen, this is so bad because I lean into the jokes and people think I'm fucking serious. Yeah, but it's okay. We know, we know your joke. And, you, and then you end up messaging me. You're like, I hope that doesn't affect yeah. my reputation. Yeah, I hope that doesn't look really bad. <laughs> Maybe people don't really think that. <laughs> That's all right. They can think it. Um, Guy, it's good yeah. to see you, but we're going now. Okay. We're not going to do any questions. Did we do any questions? If you guys got time. Ian's usually got a two-hour limit. No, we're good for a couple minutes. Okay. Uh... I don't think we even started for I did. I did a Q and A today too, so I still got some questions. What did Kurad tell you guys? And don't lie to me. What about what? We were on for the for the phone call, guy. We heard it. Yeah. Oh, uh, you heard me all upset. Yeah, he put you on speakerphone, and we, and we were like, I, no, no, I, no. I, I, I missed it really, but I didn't think. Right, they could, I, I, I didn't was think, upset. 
No, no, I didn't. No, no, we, we were laughing, dude. Time out. I didn't think they could hear you. First of all, because the mic. I don't care. I, dude, I when I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I was. I said I was upset. No, as well. we, I, I could like barely hear you talking. I don't give a shit. Listen, guy. Justin was making fun of you, but other than that, everybody was. Being no, nice. I was not, guy. See, he always. He, you know, what he's trying to do, guy. He's trying to drive a wedge. <laughs> I. You know what's funny? I was. You know what's crazy? I was on the other line talking with a buddy, and I was fine, and. He's and he was like, Are you okay? And as soon as he said, Are you okay? Just I was like, No, I'm not okay, actually. I'm just not. So, how did you respond when I asked if you were okay? When I did that, me, yeah, just now when I text you, how was how did you feel? He I wants you to say, He wants you to say your text. That you me cried. Did you get an emotion? I, did. I got upset. I did. That's why I said, I said, Give me five minutes. I need to wipe my eyes. Oh, that's when you got upset? Yeah. You see, you hear that? Go ahead. You, you made him cry. That's nice. I mean, yeah. I said, why, why is that? Why would you want to do that? Me? Because that's there's he evokes an emotional point. response because yeah, I, I would want to make my friend. Text. I would want to make my friend feel good. I wouldn't make him want to. Cry yeah, you told him you're like, dude, it's not even a bad tear. You're gonna be fine. Quit being a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> that's, oh, no, that's, I, not I, I, that's not what I said. Every every injury I've had, he's literally said that. <laughs> you fucking pussy. You're he fine. Actually, I, I said that. I, I tore my quad the first time. He's like, oh, I, I've done that. I tore my quad off the fucking bone. That. See, that's just the muscle belly. Goes, oh, you have two holes in your leg? In, in Fuad's defense, he's just got a lot of experience. For, <laughs> yeah. for, for people watching, motherfuckers, these <laughs> I said it'll be okay. Not to diminish it, but to no, lessen you, the impact of his anger. You were, do, you yes, you me, were. do you want to give me a, uh, a <laughs> diagnosis? A live diagnosis? <laughs> what do you mean? You, what do you, no, you... You tore the muscle. You tore the belly of the muscle. Sam, I was fine. willing to show you. You can tell me what you think. I think it's, look, it, it's in the belly of the muscle. It's going to be fine. Will it leave a dent? Depends how bad, but so what? You're not competing. Oh, so there's not. a dent. That's okay. Is it okay. black and blue yet? Uh, I got vice on it. I didn't have it worked. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. I've I've had a 12 centimeter tear oh. in my hamstring with absolutely no bruising. So you hmm. can still be torn pretty badly without having a bruise. That's kind of a myth, but... um. It, it I scream for you like like my like, my, my philosophy guy, guy. My philosophy at this point is as long as I can train, I don't give a shit what it looks like because I'm not going on stage. Yeah. So the fact that it's in the belly of the muscle is a very good thing. Because if it was a quad, you'd be like, "Fuck." I'm like afraid to train my legs. It's the second second the second time in the second leg. Well, you're not going to train your legs for a bit now. Yeah, you're going to take a break, and then you got to do what I do, man. On leg day, I fucking warm up a lot. It's not just leg extensions. It's like I do. Hold on, like hold on, and I'll be honest with you. I train with Joe every day. We normally do abductors, adductors, hamstrings, and yeah. then a quad movement. And today, I literally was like, hey, let's just start with fucking extensions. What out, yeah. out of the fucking blue was like, let's do that. I was like, yeah. we'll go extensions. And I, then I said hamstrings and then squat. And we didn't even fucking do that. But, so guy, I I also, that? but guy, I also think that if it was inflamed from the taser, yeah, it might not have mattered. Yeah, I don't. Um, should I sue him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you rather live in the wild, wild west era or medieval times? Wild, wild west. Yeah, wild, wild west, bro. Yeah, the quality of life in medieval times. Sal 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 fucking saloons and hookers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I medieval. I think middle medieval times, like life expectancy, is probably fucking. That's One probably point. pretty close to as bad as it gets in time to live, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, pick one pair of shoes for the rest of your life. Oh, fuck. I don't fucking know. Chucks. Why? God, those are Because they're comfortable. Because they're comfortable. No, they're not. No, they're not. Yeah, they are very comfortable. You're pretending. Crocs. Why would I pretend? Just because they're not comfortable. What's, what's Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If uh, the, I don't if, the, Okay, wait, wait. Answer me a question. If the in thing is wearing Jordans, why would I pretend to wear the out of style thing? It's actually like hardcore, bro. It is. Yeah, it's, 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 you're, paying, you're paying homage to your arrow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, if I was hardcore, I'd have Atomics on. What do you got there? Crocs. Slippers? Oh, that's like what chicken. you'd wear for the rest of your life? Those are kind of nice. Crocs. Crocs. Right, you're like a you're like a slipper guy for sure. Eh, guy? Love, 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 I have I have Uggs, I I always have something on my feet. You wear slippers around the house, food? I have a pair of Uggs. Nonstop. Around. You Let wear them see. like pretty almost all the time. Oh, Justin, yeah, I got those recently. Uggs, right? I got. Yeah, yeah. I got to huh? tell you though, Ian, that's only Uggs, a, yeah. that's only a recent thing since I retired. Yeah, I, I don't ever. I don't ever wear slippers ever. Melissa Listen, there's a there's a a fact oh, yeah. obviously that 
Oh. When you're on a when you're on a bunch of gear and you weigh 280 pounds plus, you're fucking hot all the time. So I don't want anything on my feet. Yeah. But since we're, yeah, but but like, since, but, but I have like I have, I have all hardwood floors and tile. Like, so do what? So do I. My feet on the like the it's like stick. Ah, I'm good. I at least gotta have socks on. I feel like now I'm I'm off everything and I'm kind of I'm like my temperature is normal. So now I wear Uggs all the time. Like people come over with no socks on and I'm like, why? You think they're getting like foot germs on your floor? What's wrong with you? Look at those things, dude. Look at that big old fucking... Oh, look at that Pilata push. How much, how how much, for a big toe. How much did your foot grow since you started bodybuilding? Uh, one full size. <laughs> yeah, I went, I went from a 10 to 11. Yeah, I went from... Like, you know what I almost bought the other day? I saw on Instagram, they had this thing that you put by your door when you walk in. You step into it, and it like rat puts his Oh, rat I saw that. It. And it automatically... And I was like, perfect. Solves my OCD. You can keep your fucking shoes on. Yeah. Problem solved. I've seen them at like at like like uh like medical offices and stuff as well. Yeah, those are right. ones that those are ones that you slip on, right? No, I've seen what? the ones that you step you into. Step into? Well. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Imagine too. walking into somebody's house, having your nice shoes, and not the day one, and just go. I'm gonna would buy you, you that. Does that make you feel uncomfortable? When's your birthday? I don't. I think if I would just March twenty first, prefer to kick my shoes off. I'm gonna buy. Hey guys, remind me to buy that for guy for his birthday. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you we'll know what I'm gonna get? You know what I'm gonna get on March twenty second? A back point oh. I'm not going to remind you. A back, he's going to send me a backbone 2.0. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you're such an asshole. I was, listen, I tried, man. I tried. Those are good. No, they're not. It's horrible. I have never used it. <laughs> you liar. You said it's good. Shut up, Ian. He's, he's, being, cool. he's being nice. Shut up, guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but do you think the foot growth is from weight or, because I feel like most of my oh. foot growth. Came in the GH. I started dude. using GH, yeah. Yeah. It's growth, growth hormone for it's, sure. It's the fucking humatrope, bro. Yeah. <laughs> dude, yeah, I remember. Was, I was a size 11 till like well into my pro career. And like, I, I'm a 12 or even maybe a 12 and a half now. I was 11 for the longest time. Now I'm like 11 and a half, 12. Why didn't yeah, we I, slap an inch on our dongs? I know. Yeah. Fuck. That happens from getting shredded, though. Yeah, everything sucks in. You lose all the all the pelvic fat. You just get like, you just get way too fat in the off season. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, my dick is gone in the off season. No dick. Really? A little fucking uh, little no, pig in a blanket? Listen, I can afford to lose an inch in the off season. I'm all right. I'm yeah, it's funny. It's funny. I, mean, I saw I actually saw some statistic about like body fat. For every like so many pounds you gain, you lose like centimeters off your dick. You I know? See, yeah. I've seen that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying you got to be sure. So, so the leaner you are, the smaller your dick is. No, no. the leaner you are, the bigger your dick is. Yeah. Oh, I think all, all around, like, all around. That's why it's like the everyone thinks those like tall, skinny guys are the guys with the huge dongs. It's not yeah. even because their dongs are big; they just have nothing to hide it. You know, so yeah, Paul exactly. Lewis must have like negative five percent body fat. Yeah. See, if all of us <laughs> would be like 165, we'd have like 11 inch dicks. Obviously, oh, it's but... also plus the canvas, right? Like when you have fucking 35 inch quads, you're fucking yeah. Pecker sure is they. like. I feel like my, my dick was a lot bigger when I was younger. 100%. <laughs> like when now, I got out of the hospital, so now I got out little... of the hospital with men. Or did the steroids just shrink our dicks? Because apparently that I was happened. like a I was like 105 pounds when I got out of the hospital with meningitis, but I had this this same a, dick. A hammer. Oh, <laughs> the, same, really the same dick. <laughs> you have a different dick. <laughs> I had these tiny little legs and then just this huge dick. Just hammer. That, now you have this tiny little walking dick. like this. Massive yeah, legs. exactly. Yeah. Now my legs are big. It's not that impressive anymore. So we'll call you Little Dick Shire from now on. Wait, what was the last time you were under two hundred pounds? Oh man, me? <laughs> 20, years, Twenty years old, nineteen years old. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah I was like this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, you kick him all fucking ways down, huh? I'm just kidding. I love you, guy. How much were you this morning? I don't know. Wait, two hundred six, dude. I've like, been no. I've literally been around two hundred two. The last time okay, I was so under that wasn't that insulting. I think the last time I was under two fifty. <laughs> it's insulting because it's true. Last time, <laughs> last time I was under two fifty was twelve years ago. Yeah, it would have been like one of your early pro shows. Yeah, like twenty ten, I think two thousand nine, maybe those shows. Anyway, I I don't look great. I just I just fucking you know look like whatever. Uh, budget bulk potatoes or pasta? Pasta. Pasta. Potatoes. Pasta's cheaper, dude, and more dense. 
Is it cheaper? Man, I just feel yeah. like, dude, it's like, it's like two potatoes bucks. Potatoes are like a, a lot bag. easier to make, though. Yeah, but a bag will make you like one meal if you're trying to eat big, where potatoes, a bag that's like six ninety nine will get you like four meals. Yeah, but, yeah, pasta, but look, the pasta is still like, dense. I don't know about you guys. 100, 100 carbs from pasta or 100 carbs from potatoes, I'm going to smash the pasta. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if I'm you do mash it. potatoes, if you mash them, it's pretty easy to eat. But yeah. <laughs> what did you say, guy? Potatoes are easier to cook? Faster. Well, yeah, I guess if you microwave them. You throw a potato in a microwave. You can't throw a fucking just a pot, but you got to bake pasta, put it in a bowl, water, boil it, and have sauce. Yeah, but you can cook Once. a vat of pasta and then add olive oil and just leave it in the fridge. I mean, you can cook a fucking whole sheet of fucking potatoes, put them in the oven, put them in the Nah, because when you put potatoes in the fridge, they just suck after. They look yeah, they do. Yeah. I only like potatoes if I, like, if I cook them fresh and eat them fresh. <laughs> <laughs> You're so disgusting. <laughs> no, guys. Uh, okay, we'll do one more. Uh, when does guy, when does guy come up with his giveaway results? I don't know why I read that. Like I can't read, but whatever. <laughs> when does the guy <laughs> come up with the? <laughs> when did you take English class? I don't know what giveaway results he's talking about. Is uh, this guy trying to get me in a, a leg my balls joke? No, I hope so. I love those. No, <laughs> I do. So if I do a giveaway, if I pick somebody, so what happens is I pick winners for giveaways. I DM the people. I guess he's wondering if I announce them live. I can announce them. Like I did gift card giveaways and I DM the people that won. But if people, I don't always put them in the, uh, in my story when they win, I DM them. You, like never, the you never announce it? I announced the win, or like I'll DM him and say, "Hey, this like but you never make a public announcement." I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, I, mean, just like, I announce it. everybody else lost. I mean, I could. Yeah, yeah. The guy in my Q and A, a question said, "You ever use L I G M A?" He's ever, he's trying to get me to say what's Ligmar. I don't know what that is, and then he can be a Ligma balls. <laughs> Here, here's some options. <laughs> How many shits a day do you take in the off season? These Five. Are, these are three. Three. That's three is a pretty consistent. Five yeah. is probably average for me. Wait a minute. I have a fucking look at this. Depends depends if I'm eating clean or if I'm eating pizza. If I'm eating clean, then I'm <laughs> 300 <laughs> diarrhea shits like Fuad, you know? See? <laughs> That's it's true. Look at wait. <laughs> I found this. What is this? These are all the options to Ligma. So get them back. What did he write? Do you Ligma? Do you ever use Ligma. I like slob on my <laughs> ask him ask him go back and say um well no because this is gonna be posting on my story then yeah that's why it'll be even funnier because you're okay. gonna go back it my it fat. what's my fat m-i-p-h-a-t so say ru rubbing d's <laughs> say no ah! say, say no suck on d's suck on d's nuts no i gotta do a cup cup ma say only if you suck on d's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one, Ian. Say only if you suck at these. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> these are great. <laughs> Plant tulips. <laughs> peanut rate. What's peanut rate? I don't, I don't know. Peanut rate rising. <laughs> <Rise in>. Joke. <clears throat> Wendy's. <CD>. Wendy's. <laughs> peanut. <laughs> Right. I don't know what half of these are. Yeah, I don't. I, I get the first row and that's it. Yeah, these ones. Yeah, the first two. No, Sawcon is Sawcon. Slobberon is sl like Slobon. Yeah, the first two things. Hippodis is good. Gulpin. Gulpin these both. Gulpin. I like Gulpin. <laughs> Gulpin's good. <laughs> Rabin. Any Imagine trading. dragons. I don't understand that. Yeah, what the fuck is Any these? trading. Slaw bunny. It gets Slaw, worse. Right? Slaw bunny's nuts. <laughs> oh, there's Wilma. Wilma. One a pound. Ha. Huh. Anyway. Uh okay, boys. Guy. Hope you're okay, man. Get that BBC and TV running hard, bro. Make sure you yeah. pound, pound some Advil for the next couple of days. It's swelling down. Keep a lot of ice on it. I took five hundred in Aproxen. I do have TV and BPC actually too. Up, uh, up the Sarah. That State. never that never did anything for me, Ian. What? I'm not. I haven't That's taken growth since I retired. Did Justin. it work? Did it work for you? You oh, have like, no. Wait, 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 wait. One at a time. We go ahead, guy. I was talking to you, Ian, but go ahead, guy. I, I haven't taken growth since I retired. Oh, guy, uh, 
Justin, you were telling them to take growth to just yeah, up and growth. Growth. Yeah. I, I was I think yeah. at one point I, I was trying to take I started taking some I use and I just stopped. I think it lasted for like a week. Ian, I was asking you if you TVC worked for you or TV five hundred. Sorry, not. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of good science. Yeah, did you do I it? Is that I does that good uh, science? I just that, I haven't had any like quantifiable results with it. Is it I, I am? I, yeah, same me. Yeah. Is it I am? Or I, I don't know. I'll just use a okay. launch, then hit shoot it like as close to the area as I can. That's what yeah, I. Yeah, I was just, I was just like, like, like sub Q or. Like, no, I just take like a 12.3 or whatever the half inch ones are, slim pins. And like, say it's like my knee that's hurting. I would just like go like right in my quad at the, like close to it. I, like, I don't do that. I was actually just pinching that fold of skin at the knee and going. That's uh, what I'm asking. Well, I, I just shoved it into the muscle. I was told, I was told to do what Ian was doing. Oh, really? Cause I was using it for my tricep tendon and the, the guy was like, <laughs> just go right into the tendon with the, yeah. with the insulin needle. Hmm, okay. Yeah, no, when enough. I've had like like knee issues going on, and I fire that shit up, or like I know when Chris has had tears or anything like that, or with his bicep right now, or when he did his hamstring the other year, he's used it a lot. And like we can get it prescribed too from you get it prescribed from Revive Clinic. Okay, okay. So yeah. we'll get, like, I don't know that I've given it enough time to. Yeah, no, and you got to use a, like, a fair amount. <clears throat> well, the other thing is my elbows might have been so bad that it might have been too far gone. Yeah, I mean, for... if you're dealing with like arthritis or something, yeah. it might be a little yeah. different. Too. Yeah, <laughs> chronic chronic inflammation might be too much. Yeah. yeah. But no, for healing, in terms of actually healing injuries, like something like that, they'll definitely speed up your recovery time. Absolutely. Uh, okay, Guy, what are you doing? Where'd you go? We're going to take off. I was, I was leaking. Oh, okay. Oh, your ice was leaking. Yeah, can you see it? Let me see. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a little bit of, uh, yeah, you see a little oh, bit. Oh, you can see a little indent, but. <laughs> it's probably nothing serious, dude. I got, yeah, my shit's all fucking torn up too. You, you just look like Grammy now, bro. Yeah, he's got a fucking side slit, baby. Yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. We're gonna go. Bye, I'll uh right. catch you guys next week. All right. All right. Peace. Bye guys.